Uh, Tabin. Tabin. Hi. Tabin, are you there? Are you there? I, You're there. I, I, I'm here now. Are you there? I'm here. We're here. All, we're both here. So, we're both you know, here. You know, speaking it's... of hearing things, I heard something recently. I heard that Abba and Elvis Costello will, will be touring together. It's amazing and fun. So it's the Abba and Costello concert. But of course, I'm just wondering who's on first. That's okay. what I'm wondering, and that's what I heard. Uh, uh, oh, all right. Well, you know, you know what happens when uh, old people that hear well. You know what that is? A, a good thing? I don't know. Well, they're deaf defying. But anyway, let's uh, if they are, let's get they are. on with let's get on with our show, shall we? We shall. This is barely forecasting, featuring Tabin and Injured Nerves audio production. All right. Well, hello, Moo Bark Fluff, and welcome to all our friends in the Potterverse. I am Barely Normal, your co-host Bear, looking forward to the Oregon State Fair, and yeah, with me is that pupnificent pup, that great big floof, Tabin. How the fluff are you, Tabin? Well, hi there, uh, floof, I guess. Hi, hi there, uh, Barely. Floof. I am doing floof, just fine. Yes. My my mm-hmm. what? You're a floof. I am. <laughs> it happened. Hi, I did it. I didn't even <laughs> apply, and I got the job. So there it is. <laughs> hi, every fur out there, Moog Bark Fluff in the podverse. Great to bark at you once again. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a pretty good week, just uh, doing the things and stuff. How are you, Barely? How's your week been? Week? My week's been fairly, been fairly mellow. You know, I mentioned the Oregon State Fair, because that starts this weekend here in Salem, Oregon. And I love going to the fair, seeing the animals, the vendors, and the competitions. There's so many pies, cakes, and beans to look at at the Oregon State Fair. It's amazing. It's I always mean, fun and interesting to look at a bean. I can sit there and look at a bean for like five hours and watch it grow into a healthy young sprout mm-hmm. bean sprout that is i don't yes. know what i'm talking about so yes continue on with your story there Barry. well and, you know I, the, yeah so they have they have bean competitions which i thought was kind of odd yeah i mean you go and you look and there's these big display cases with big plates and one bean sitting on it and they've got, you know, judge comments about the bean. I'm like, you didn't grow. You grew the bean. Great. The bean is taking. You're taking credit for what the for, bean did. You're taking did. credit for the bean. Like, Poor <laughs> bean. And there's 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 no like strawberries or other fruit to like defend the bean. And it's, it's no, on its own. It's, yeah. And it's funny because, you know, you go the first day and all the beans are fresh. By the time you get to the 12th day of the fair, that bean is pretty shriveled up. And you kind of wonder yeah, how and, that and got first It's not first because place. they're. Uh, like, yeah. They're not. And it's not because it's unhappy about like. Having the credit taken away from them, it's because, well, <laughs> duh. yeah, <laughs> duh, duh, duh. And uh, I spent a weekend at Seaside uh, for a friend's Ooh. birthday, Bir- birthday, 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 Bir- birthday. And uh, we mostly just sat around drinking, but there was the annual Seaside Beach volleyball tournament going on over Ooh. there. Wow, uh, nothing, nothing like the volleyball tournament that takes place at Phil at uh, at uh. <laughs> Felt fellowship come on the blue that takes place at FC every year, but oh, yeah, uh, that... they they did have 130 courts set up on the beach though. 130, really? Yeah. Does it like stretch for a few miles or something? No, there was like 15, you know, blocks of 15 for oh, okay. about a half a mile each wow. direction, and then a big huge center court. So that must uh, have been very pl- actionful. Actionful. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and they played for four days. Well, the teams didn't play for four days. That would be a marathon. But they had yeah. teams playing, playing for four for days and different different stuff like that. So that's a lot of that's balls exciting. in the air. That's what that that's is. A lot know. of uh, yeah. lots of juggling going on. Yeah, cool. Yeah, neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, have you done anything Not... special this week? Um. Uh, oh, I thought. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? This is I'm very sure. special. The answer is no. <laughs> Well, uh, since we were speaking of court, uh, we have a matter to attend to. Matter. Yes. The High Council has been convened. Hear ye, hear ye. The High Council of Fluff has been convened to hear testimony from Lux, Operon, and Rain Raccoon as to their nefarious and furtive subjugation and obliteration 
while seizing control of the podcast two weeks ago. Rain Raccoon, you stand before the council. How do you plead? I plead guilty. Right then. Lux Operon, you stand before the council. How do you plead? I mean, why didn't I get to talk to my lawyer? Also, are these manacles really necessary? Yes, they're both necessary, and lawyers are overrated and overpriced. I mean, I can't, I think it probably could, I think, you know, I was told that if I, if I take, can you offer me a plea deal if I, if I plead? If you plead guilty, you will be treated fairly, I promise. Rain, right, you better. Man. I, oh. I don't know. I don't need this on my job. Uh, he's Rain. You saying no? No, no, I'm no, no. Don't don't, already... don't you roll over on me. Oh my god! I'd, you know what? I don't want this on my jacket, but I'll 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 plead guilty. I'll take the deal. Right then. Sounds good. So your sentence then is to serve on the staff of BFFT indefinitely. <laughs> oh no! Whoa, oh, boy, and, oh boy, man! Yeah, and take that. You must deed over that motorcycle you created to Tabin and I. <gasps> Not the motorcycle! Please. Yes, not the, the dragon bike. bike. The, motorcycle. the dragon bike. Yes. Kicked it with the dragon bike too. We that we earned that. Yeah. Well, oh, man. you stole the pod, and so therefore you must give up the motorcycle. Oh my gosh, Rain, do you even have that motorcycle still? Uh, somewhere. Oh, All man. right. Uh, All right. It, when I find it, I'll bring it back to you guys. Oh. I think we, we we removed the head and we did the. Are I thought sure I heard you ride up on it, Rain. I thought I heard oh. you ride up on it. No, no, that was some other raccoon on a motorcycle. No, no, that I was, was going to say, was, he's got a lot of just, motorcycles. Here, give me those keys. Uh, give, don't don't fight me for those keys. Give them back. Now, all right. This is a sad day. And, Getting our magic dragon bike repoed. And mm. you must help find the recording of the lost episode that you hijacked. Ooh. Now, oh, that's I don't know. On you, if, Rain. <laughs> well, and, see, the, the, the way that my transmitter works, it kind of overwrites what was oh. recorded. Oh. It's like a temporal timey-wimey thing. I'm mm. not sure that the lost recording exists anymore. Oh. Uh, All we right. Kind of, we kind of pushed it out of reality into mm. another yeah. into we, we, we the could, we, nether We could region. time travel. We could time travel back to the Barely mm. and Tabin that were recording that podcast, but then we'd, we'd create a, 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 a what, 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 do you, what do you call it? Paradox. Paradox. Uh, Paradoxes, that's oh, the Oh, paradox, right. not paradox. I was going to say, right. and if that happens, well, first of all, why have a paradox when you just need one? But secondly, you know, I, then then we wouldn't even know who the barely we'd keep versus the Tabin we'd keep versus ones that we'd, I don't know, I guess throw in front of the transformation ray. So yeah. I, the, the time yeah. travel thing gets real messy. So we may not. Well, gonna, all right. Well, that. if this should happen again, you will be further chastised oh, and yeah. a severe letter will be Oof. placed in your permanent file. Remember oh, well. that permanent file from school days? <laughs> Remember yes. that file? We Not found file. your files. Oh, no. We oh, found man. your permanent files. And I don't know. You were both very incorrigible. Passing notes, talking at a turn, right. I mean, teasing trying... others. And, and and what is this, Lux? What is this about a slide toll that you put on the other people, in, the other kids in well, school? They were done. So here's the thing. I cleaned up the slide. I maintained the slide. And I protected them as they slid down the slide. And that is a privilege that one must pay the price of admission. And I was only asking for pixie sticks. I don't see why the drama came up when I was removing a couple of toenails because someone was trying to cheat me. But regardless, I, I, am a, I am someone who served the community, sir. I protected the community. So I earned those pixie sticks. Thank you. All right. Well, with that, court <laughs> is adjourned. <laughs> All right, well, Tabin, that takes us up to our weekly challenge. Yes. And our weekly challenge this year, this year or this week, not just for the and, year, and but for the week. And it's in the year, so yeah. There you yeah, go. It's, it's, a, it's part of the year. The week is part of the year. It's one of 52 parts of the year. Mm -hmm. um, to find your best friend from high school and mail them a letter. Ooh. Now, for some, that may take, you might have to actually go to the post office and buy a thing called a stamp. A stamp. What is on... this thing? What is the stamp I, of what you speak? So, so you take a pen and paper and you write words down to your friends. And then ah. you put them in the thing called an envelope. Envelope. Yes. And you put that in there and then you lick the envelope. Lick. And there's a special part of the envelope that you lick. 
Oh. And then you seal the envelope and it, and it seals it. It's like sticky stuff. Is this a thing that happened like at some it, point uh, in our years this ago? Sounds many, crazy. many years ago. I don't I know. understand this. This right. is weird. And then you then you put you go to get a stamp, which means that you stamp. paid for the mail to be delivered to that person. It's an amazing thing. That is it's old a, school. That's it's very old school. Crazy. Yeah. I, I'm gonna have to look at, I don't know if I believe you actually. This yeah. sounds too crazy. Right. So so if you do that, friends, now for some of you, that may be just like a couple of days ago because you might still be in high school and you're listening to this podcast. So, you know, yeah, you can you give go. them the Straight. letter if you, you want. Just, but, you know, here, have this. I, I, have this. The, I wrote this for you. And they're like, what is this thing on paper? What is what? What, what are you it's doing? Like, it's like, <laughs> and, uh, do, and do I uh, put it into my phone somehow. <laughs> somehow. Yeah. It's like, let me take a picture of it so I can read it later and <laughs> zoom in on the words. It's like. <laughs> But if you do that, take a picture of the envelope and the stamp and send it to us in the BFFT chat. That'd be kind of fun to have uh, letters. You know, don't 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 put your friend's address on there, obviously, because then I'll just send them all sorts of weird, you know, junk mail. And I want to say, well, we're in the weekly challenge, not because it's anything to do with that, but the battle between San Jose and Columbus, Ohio, for the very the very best or most listened to city. Ah, oh, uh, that's right still now, going. How's it? How's that going? Uh, San Jose is in the lead again. By oh, two, really? by two listens. Yeah, it goes back really? and forth, and <laughs> San Jose's so in the cute. lead by two listens. <laughs> it's like, so I come on, know Columbus! What's going on, <laughs> come on, Columbus! You're losing to San Jose by two listens. Come on, oh, get it up my. there. It's like, come on, <laughs> tell, tell your friends that's the only way you're going to beat San Jose. Only way you're going to get up there. This is really cool. Jose. I love that there's like this little battle going on, and we're like, we can watch it happen and we can unfold. Literally, watch it happen in real time, unfolding. Yes, Definitely, so. each week we need to make sure to address this because that's pretty cool. This is awesome. It'd be kind of fun if like Taipei just like jumped to the top all of a sudden. You know? All of a sudden, like <laughs> Taipei's, all, they're down at two listens, and all of a sudden they're like way it's doubling 500, everything for yeah, whatever like, reason. <laughs> so that's awesome. Anyway, well, and that brings us up to the past today. The past today. Last week, I talked about heat miser and cold miser, oh. but it's really heat miser and snow miser. Oh. And and in last week's episode, I actually put the clips of the little songs they sing on that uh, on that 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 show. That, why why am I doing this with my I hands? Don't, I don't know. Can't see you. Nobody can see me doing these things with my hands because it's an audio podcast. But I'm doing things with my hands, everybody. These are air quotes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. And then we talked about uh, the, the movie Monster with uh, Charlize Theron and Christina Ricci. And mm-hmm. I said, I promised everybody that I would let them know what it was all about. And it was made in 2003. So it's an old film. And it was about serial killer Aline Warnos, who was a former street prostitute who murdered seven, seven of her male clients between 1989 and 1990. And she was sentenced to death in Florida and she was executed in 2002. Wow. That's, um, there is darkness involved. There is darkness. It's a very dark movie. I think you mentioned movie, that last said. week. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's a very dark it's movie, know, but, uh, I wanted, I promised all the furs that I would explain it to them. And so there you have it. So if that was a downer, uh, let's tell a bad joke. Um, my name is Tabin. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not a bad so... joke. That's a good joke. Is that a good joke? <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll, we'll and, go with that. Uh, and that's, we'll go with that. that's all I have for the past the, today because we really covered a lot of stuff last week. So what do you have? Anything? I have nothing. Yeah. No, we've covered a lot of really? things. And there you go. Yeah. You didn't. You don't have anything about past episodes like you normally do? <laughs> nope. I think uh, it's been, I guess, a wow. slow week. <laughs> I get, apparently, yeah. apparently. All right. I'll have to look through my notes. Maybe I forgot something. I'll, I'll see if I do find something though. I make sure to add it to next week's past today. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I see here that you say you have a news item. Do you know what that is? I do know what that is. Okay. Um, it's not part oh, of the furries in the news, but it's a news item I mean, from Tabin. Well, there, there's before that. I have a quick flusters. Dictionary oh, you have a word. quick flusters. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, only, sorry. only because that's in my notes. I have the flufter, flufters and then the news items. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, my word this week is uh, I I came up with it this week, and it's a real word. In oh, my in my mind, and this word is in your twinkle, mind. Yes, in my mind, this word is twinkle darts. Twinkle darts. Okay. Mm-hmm. What is a twinkle dart? 
Well, apparently, I'm sure you could find it in Fluster's Underbridge Dictionary. A twinkle dart is an ice cube. That's oh. all there is to it. There's, that's, there's that's, not that's, anything more than that. So, um, huh. An ice cube. Not an icicle, but an ice cube. A definite. Yeah, specifically an ice cube. Right. So what would it? So an icicle would be then what a twinkle spear, stick? I guess. A twinkle spear, twinkle Maybe stick, twinkle stick, something, something like that. <laughs> so for all you first out there, I guess <laughs> write us in. What should a uh, ice an icicle um, be? Icicle tw- be called. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of the Star Wars episode where the twinkle pups. What do you call them? Where did the twinkle pups go? <laughs> when they were all the little, the yeah, little yeah, 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 crystal dogs that were just <laughs> running were around, running like, around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's where that came from. Uh, but no, yes. a news item. And this just happened just today. I saw in the news. I don't know. So I actually think this, uh, the interview thing with, uh, this was with Mark Zuckerberg, you know, Facebook and everything. I think this mm-hmm. came out last Thursday, but I just happened to see it. Today was actually in the news. Um, okay. It's a CBS news item. So Mark Zuckerberg Berg was talking about his quote unquote new metaverse that they're going to have through Facebook. And this is basically VR, virtual reality, that focuses on office and workspaces. Now, I mean, that that's kind of the natural progression. But the funny thing, the fun thing about this interview is, mm-hmm. so he's talking to the CBS reporters and everything about it, and he's talking about it as if he doesn't know that VR chat exists, which of course has since 2017. So right. He's saying things about how it's always been a dream of mine that... We could meet together but not be in the same space and still work together and get things done. And it's kind of funny when you think about, well, like furries, especially, well, I don't know about Mm -hmm. especially, but as far as I know, especially I've been doing this for the last year, like intensely the VR chat, like the furry community has really made VR chat and everything grow. And... So maybe he was just talking about this from like informational standpoint for people that don't know about this stuff. Maybe. But if you watch the interview, it's like he talked about this is new revolutionary stuff. He's a smart guy. He's got to know about VR chat, but this is new revolutionary stuff. Well, <laughs> not only VR chat, but Zoom, Microsoft Teams, yeah, uh, well, YouTube. And, I mean, well, all he's that focusing. Stuff. He's focusing specifically on the VR aspect of it, not not the Zoom oh, or okay. anything, but the VR, like actually being in the same room with people, but not being in the same room, right? And and oh, like being okay. little animated things where you can move things around and everything and interact with your environment and stuff. Hmm. And but okay, so yeah, that's so for example. New. Huh? It's not I, new. It's not, it's not new. new. So I don't. I mean, he's a smart guy. He's got to know about this. But still, if you watch the interview, it's, it's like he had no I think idea. He's been and micro dosing more than he should. Uh, maybe I don't know. So so you can Google if you just Google the words Mark Zuckerberg virtual reality CBS because that's what the news platform was on. You'll it'll mm-hmm. just come up on YouTube right away. You can watch this. This is a nine minute video of this. And so it's. It's fun to watch. So they actually do, of course, go into the VR setting in an mm-hmm. office where they're talking and everything. And of course, everyone else is like, oh, this is amazing and everything. <laughs> and so Cooper Tom, of course. Of course. Of course, made this awesome parody. It's only a 45 second parody of it. So go look for Cooper <laughs> Tom's parody of this. He does this awesome parody. He's like just talking with another fox in the room. Uh-huh. He's talking as he's Mark Zuckerberg and everything. It's like, yeah, there's this new stuff and this is really cool. And look what we're doing here and we're interacting and stuff. <laughs> and I mean, you can imagine Cooper Tom, he does an awesome job with this. I really yes. highly recommend watch the orig- original interview and then mm-hmm. watch Cooper Tom's. So, <laughs> So in the original interview, someone's like, so what can what special things can you do in this environment? And Mark's like, well, one of the things is you can dynamically change the environment. And then, and I don't even know exactly what he did, but it's like he, uh, for the example of this dynamical mm-hmm. thing you can do in this environment is he changed right. the angle of the CBS logo, logo or something. Ooh. Exactly. And everyone else is like, wow, that's so amazing and everything. Like, whatever. And so in Cooper Cooper Tom's parody, he's talking to this fox. He's talking to this fox and there's this picture, you know, on the wall between them Mm -hmm. of, of, I forget what it is. It's like a sailboat or something. And he's like, so 
this amazing thing you can do. You can change the environment dynamically. And then he changes the sailboat to a nature picture. And wow. <laughs> wow. Amazing. And anyway, I highly recommend checking that out because it's hilarious. It, it, absolutely. I will check that out. And all our listeners, check that out. And and if you do, write us in on write the chat in, or email. Let us know what you think about it. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. All right. Well, I think that takes us up to media. I love the way that you just make noises like that whenever I come to the next <laughs> section. You just noises. every every section you come up with a little word or voice I just, thing. I just do it. <laughs> I'm just do such it. a pup. I'm gonna let you start with media today. Oh wow, that's crazy. Oh, wow. I, I, I know it's it's we're we're just going outside the box. We're, we're going just off going the rails crazy. already. Off the ra- dun dun dun. <laughs> Uh, I actually don't have too much. So I'm reading, um, I think I mentioned last week I started reading, I've continued reading The Prisoner's Release, which is this Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle Gold book, the second in his Vol series. It's really good. He's, you know, Kyle, he's a great writer. Been watching South Park still for uh, like old South Park episodes for lunchies. We finished season two. I I forgot to mention that I started watching season two of Outer Banks. I think I mentioned that we watched it in the bank. Like it would have been a while ago. It's a Netflix thing, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, It's so good. I highly recommend you check this out. Um, They only have two seasons now. What's Hmm? it about? Well, okay. So it starts out just, you've got some, like some kids, you know, they're like 18, 21, 22. I don't know. They're they're in their 20s. Kids that hang out and there's kind of the rural kind of, they're like their own posse type thing. I don't know. It's hard to describe, but it's one of those type of things. They've got their own camaraderie and, camaraderie and everything. And it starts out just, you know, these little shenan- shenanigans they, they do and kind of the story about them and the community they live in and their quote unquote rivalry with the higher up, the, the rich kids and stuff. So it's one of those okay. type of things. Oh, and, and, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, so it's interesting. It's not like amazing at first, but it's also like, oh, no, this is entertaining. I'll keep watching it. But by the end of season one, oh, so good. Like they they like have to take time to develop, <laughs> obviously, apparently, because it just gets right. so good by the end of season one. And then so we watch season two and it's just so good, in my opinion. Anyway, so um, I recommend check it out. Every fur out there, check it out. Outer Banks is what it's called. Yeah, just watch it. And first half of season one, it's like, okay, this is entertaining. But I, but then all of a sudden, it's like, it's so good. It's like very, you'll just have to watch it. It's, it's really great. Okay. And also, we've been watching, you might, a while ago, I talked about how we watched season one of a show called Happy Endings. Do you remember yes. talking about that? Yeah. Yes. And yeah, so yeah. we're watching season two now. It just continues to be a good little good little show. I think cool. it's really worth watching. Um, it's, it's funny, um, hilarious. It's the show where I said they have the gay guy that they, we don't know if they were trying to make a frat boy gay butch and failed or something, but it's, it's oh, pretty good. Right. Oh. Yeah. No, it's all really right. good. And cool. Lisa, Lu- Lisa, Lucifer, I think I mentioned last time I talked about Lucifer that we finished season five. That was so wrong. It was season three we finished. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I didn't think they had a season five yet, but okay. They do. They do. Oh, do they? Ah. Because I found out season six releases on September 10th. Oh, wow. And okay. apparently everyone thought that season five was the end. and But then they just recently announced season six and like, oh, there's well, another season. Because Netflix picked them up as a Netflix series because it came off of network. And so it's only being made for Netflix now. I watch it on Netflix. Right. But uh, at the end of season two, they canceled it. Off, it was on Fox. Oh, and at the at the end of season three on Fox, Fox dropped it, and Netflix picked it up. So now it's a Netflix original. Oh, okay. Well, which is why you have a little more risque and a little more more adult language in there. I don't know if you noticed that or not. I did not. Yeah, I am so confused now. So okay. anyway, I've only anyway. seen up through th- <laughs> season three, and season six releases on September tenth. <laughs> Well, you've got three seasons to catch up on then. There I do, I do. Yeah. And right. and it's a good thing that I have to catch up on them because that's how I like my hot dogs. Catch up on your hot dogs. Ah, yeah. I don't like hot I don't like ketchup on my hot dogs. Oh, really? I like mustard and relish. I like mustard. And that's no, it. Mustard. Yeah. Mustard no, and relish. Stuff. That's it. And maybe a slice mustard. of cheese. Oh, cheese, yeah, that's a good one. No, yeah. I accept or, I will take yeah. that. Okay. All right. And so that's now, my media. I, I'm, I'm, 
<laughs> awesome. We talked about hot dogs because we got off the rails like we always do. It's like the rails are now, that we do. The rails have turned into hot dogs, and so the train is in lots of trouble. Ooh, yes, it's a hot dog train. Anyway, so I've been continuing to rewatch Game of Thrones and Golden Girls and Mash. Nice. Oh, yeah. And the other day we were sitting there kind of flipping through the television. Well, not the television, but the television programs, because if you flip the television, it gets broken. So gets you don't broken. want to do that. Yeah, you don't no. want to do that. So the penguin I, falls off. <laughs> I know the penguin falls off the television. What's that penguin doing on the telly? Looks like it's standing. <laughs> no, no. Anyway, um, so there's a new show on Apple TV called Schmigadoon. Schmigadoon. Schmigadoon, yes, and it's a it's a Lorne Michaels production. You might know Lorne Michaels oh, from uh, Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, it's a parody and homage to Golden Age musicals of the 1940s and 50s. Now, oh. the series stars an ensemble cast starring Cecily Strong and Keegan Keegan Michael Key as the main characters. They are on a hike, and this is. I mean, if you watch the coming attractions, there's no spoilers here. They're on a hike and they walk across a bridge and they find themselves in a 1940s musical. And the okay. people are all singing to them and they don't have no clue as to why they're in this musical. <laughs> I and it's all choreographed that. and it's hilarious. It's like it, it's kind of like Bear Grizz, Grizz Bear or whatever that is, meets Glee. Um, in fact, oh. Okay. In fact, one of the jokes that he makes at one point, he says, I'm stuck in an episode of Glee and I hate it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Good to know. Nice. They're patching, trying to patch up their failed relationship, and they just find themselves arguing, arguing and they get lost and soon discover the town called Schmigadoon, perpetually trapped in a Golden Age style musical. They soon learn that they cannot leave the town until they find true love. Oh, true so, love. True love. Mowage. That great. Great experience. So the title and the concept parodies the 1947 musical Brigadoon, therefore, therefore the name Schmigadoon. The cast is very star-studded. I mean, you've got Fred Armisen, Martin Short, Alan Cumming, Kristen Chenoweth, Anne Harada, Jane wow. Krakowski, wow. and a slew of other guest stars. Hmm, uh, so if you like musicals, it's pretty funny the way they poke fun at the musicals. They'll nice. make a they'll make a comment about something, and then the the town bursts into song and. And Keegan Michael Key is like, no, no, stop singing, stop, stop singing, no, no, stop. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yep, yep, I'll have yep, to check yep. that. And out. then I also watched, uh, started watching on HBO Max, uh, the show called Titans, which is a DC based storyline of the Teen Titans, where they're getting older and they went off to do their various things. Oh, cute! It's kind of like watching aging superheroes. Yeah. Um, they. <laughs> It's a little yeah. sad, but also fun at the same a time. A little sad. You know, it's like, you know, they, they, they suffer from like, you know, arthritis and, and problems with their knees and getting they beat up all the time. They can't exactly takes punch through steel doors anymore. Right. Yeah. Because exactly. <laughs> their hands exactly. break. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ow. Okay. So, uh, so that was, well, that was kind of fun. Check that and, out uh, too. and then I'm going on vacation here in a week. I'm going camping. I'm downloading all my books to my iPad. And I'm going to read, 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 read. Because I have nothing else to do other than read. So I'm going to read lots of Kyle Gold when I'm on vacation. Nice. So That's exciting. Yeah, Good. That's Good. what I got coming we'll, up. We'll be excited to hear about uh, what you've read and what you think. Yeah. I will, I'll probably come back and say, I never read anything because I went out kayaking or boating. Yeah, or, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> I didn't read anything because I went out doing stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, so Tabin, uh, despite their shenanigans, Lux is waiting for us to come visit for another transformation station experiment. Are you ready to go? Oh, I heard about this. Yeah, um, it's been quite interesting. The fast, the fa the fast past few mm -hmm. transformations. So, uh, yeah, we'll. I'm actually kind of excited to see what uh, happens this time. Okay, well, we don't have to walk now because because of their sentence, we have that super wonderful dragon motorcycle outside. That's so true. here's a helmet. The air uh, in my fluff, the wind in my right, fluff. Get that helmet on. All right, oh, let's yeah. uh, let's go visit Lux. <laughs> a 
All right, uh, Tabin, uh, go ahead and ring the bell. There seems to be a large rope hanging down. Maybe Lux installed a new kind of an alert system. Go ahead and pull uh, that okay. rope. And, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll just, uh, I'm a little scared, but I'll try it. I pull the rope and see what happens. A piece of paper floated down from on high. It says, Portocolis is broken. Go through the drive through So, so we get Taco Bell now? We get Taco Bell I now. Guess. That's exciting. All right, well, let's uh, let's walk around to the drive through what? What? Do you speak English? What do you guys want? Uh, we want to see luck. I think that Potato is in trouble. So what do you want to cut? What do you want to cut? What do you want to cut? Taco? I heard Taco. I'll do Crunch Wrap. Crunch Wrap. Crunch Wrap. Crunch Wrap. Okay. Yes. Well, I I, I'm not even gonna. I'm. I'm done. I'm not even gonna try. Okay. Okay. Well, let's walk around the other. I don't have no idea what's gonna happen to us now. But I have, okay. we, we're here to see Lux. Why are we having to order Crunchwrap Supremes? I'm not. I'm confused. All right, hey guys. Y'all, oh. You're the ones that want the Crunchwrap. My name's Earl, the Crunchwrap Man. Well, hi, Earl. Hey. I, hi. Can I? Lux has been talking a lot about you. Can I? Can I have my crunch wrap and could you get Lux up here, please? We kind of are here to see her. Uh, you know, well, you know, I mean, I, I just, I just want to let you know, I really appreciate you guys coming over. Not many people come by to see Earl the Crunch Wrap Man. I'm going to well, hold it up. You know, Lux gave me a chance when the world wouldn't. Sir, would your dog like a puppuccino? My my dog would love a <laughs> puppuccino. Thank you very much. But All right, I'm going to put I'm going to put a little whipped cream I, in this cup here and put some Baja Blast on top of it. There you go. There's for your dog. There you go. When Lux said you were the Crunch Wrap Earl, I thought you were person that made crunch wraps i didn't realize you were an actual crunch wrap named earl i mean it's you know it's hard to, to sell my children out this window but you gotta do what you gotta do man oh okay so, all right I'm gonna, well, you, I'm gonna hand you this one his name is you. cheeky cheeky the crunch wrap you know i also i got i got some literature for you it's, it's a program that really changed my life and i want you to have it oh well thanks thanks now uh, hey, earl what? earl what the oh my god earl oh no away away i know it looks i'm sorry I, just went... I, get, get away. I told you when the bear and the dog show up you don't you did you... Okay, get out of here okay hi, hi guys i'm so hi. sorry that's okay i'm so a... sorry wow that, that, was, that was exciting I... but <laughs> hi there love <Lux. laughs> it's good to see you i'm eating i'm eating chico the crunch wrap here she, they're very tasty yes sir. Oh, yeah, you probably shouldn't eat that crunch wrap it as a soul. You don't want to go to heck. Okay, okay. Uh, just go ahead and uh, you have through it. There's a revolving door right over there. God, I'm so sorry. The, 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 the knights who are at war with me destroyed the porticula, so I had to send people to the drive through. Uh, and Earl the Crunch Wrap okay. Man, God knows, he, he's, he's trying to sell his babies to people to make money. So come on in. <laughs> okay. Come on in. All right. Perfect. All right. All right. I am so. Dude, hey, Tapin, nice puppuccino. That looks delicious. I, I uh, blame or uh, thank Earl for my uh, puppuccino, but it is actually delicious. <laughs> uh, even though I am I, drinking I the souls Earl. of we all blame children, Earl. apparently I like the souls of right? the children I, now. <laughs> you, there's not many opportunities in this world for a giant sentient crunch wrap. So, no, no, there's not. You know, not. This, felt, this felt appropriate. I mean, I, I got him out of some trouble back in the day, something with a lemur and a jet ski. It's like a Tiger King situation but there's no time for that story so in order to get down to my lab we have so the elevator unfortunately broke along with the warring knights attacking my porticulus of but here's the great thing so as 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 mentioned beforehand there's a food delivery system now via pneumatic tube and ah. the wonderful thing is i've actually upgraded it to just barely barely size Oh, so okay. Well, you go ahead and good. hop on in this tube. We'll have to go one at a time, but it'll shoop. It'll get us right it's, down there. No very, shenanigans. It's whatever. Very, very, it's very, very tight. I'm, I'm right, pushing so you in. I'm pushing you I, I, Last time I measured you, I mean, barely. I hate to make a comment, but is there more barely now than there was there's, before? There's more barely. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. I'm going to get you in there. Close the door and go. All right. And the next tube's coming up. All right, Tabin, you ready? Uh, yeah, I, I, I hope this goes better than... I think I'm a little bit more streamlined than uh, barely. We'll put it that way, so... You are! And Tabin, you know what that means? We can fit in there together. So come on in with me. Come on in. <gasps> How All cozy. right, yep, okay. yep. Just give me, give me hugs right, with right, tight right. pawsies. And I'm going to close the My door tight, there. Tight, and tight. here we go. Woo! 
bark, bark. There we are. Oh, All right. Barely? Barely? Did hi, you make it? Hi. Hi. Yeah, I've been kind of walking around here. You know, huh? I was at a I was at a garage sale at uh, Paramount a couple of weeks ago. Oh, shoot. They've got they've got the uh, Star Trek original teleportation or the whatever they called that. Uh, Do they? Yeah, it's for Teleport? sale. That tele the um, beam me up, Scotty. Well, I guess I don't. I guess I'll have to. I'll have to call up about that. I mean, the problem is, is that you have to be, you have to be union in order to operate those things because they get oh. real mad. You know. Well, I mean, I guess dude, if you just if you buy it for personal use, why do you need a union? Well, just it's a very specialized piece of equipment, and gosh, you know, if I hire a scab, then uh, Scotty's going to come for my kneecaps. So we'll oh. we'll think about it. We'll think about okay. it. But right. in the meantime. Uh, whew, it's kind of a mess in here right now. There's a, the elephant skeleton got demolished and, you know, there's still some, but absolutely nothing happened. I don't know how that elephant skeleton got demolished. Nothing, nothing interesting mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. It just kind of fell apart mm -hmm. and ignore the sword yeah. slashes on it. So anyway, uh -huh. um, yes. mm -hmm. yeah, so, so, so the good news, the good news is that we have fixed the transformation, right? So you know how we've been having oh. trouble getting it good, powered, good. right? Because mm -hmm. we had the... We had the pole start, we had the coal fire, we had the barely right, wheel. I'm, right. I'm losing track of it. But what's wonderful about it now is that it is now powered by wave action. So I have actually, oh. there's a tiny ocean here. And if you oh. open up this little slide, then the waves should just start to gently lap against it. There's not oh. much you have to do. Just, just be careful that no fish or mermaids or crabs get caught when you open that window. Okay. Who knows I thought, what I was, comes I thought I was going to have to wave at it. <laughs> so, you know, if, 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 a, if a sea critter comes through, there, you can wave at it. But I, I would ask that you chuck the crabs back because okay. uh, right. they don't belong in here. Because, I mean, we're not really ready for the crab crunch wrap. That's like a premium, 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 premium item. Right. And uh, yeah. I have yet to workshop it. So, Tabin, Tabin, you're, you're going to be so excited. So I actually have someone, someone suggested that it's actually more predictable to transform you if you're moving. So I've inflated this lovely bounce oh, really? house for you to jump around in. Ooh, bouncy! Yeah! Ooh, I, I can do that. I, I'm a bouncy. Get back in it. Do, do you do you like it? So. It's actually it's a it's a big inflatable you, but it's a bounce it's a bounce house. See? It's got yeah, your head. No, I, it's got your I feel like right at home. You know? Yeah. yeah I can. D I dig it. I bounces. I yeah. do the bounces like absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I, I still got to figure out licensing as far as renting this thing out to kids parties. But yeah, just go ahead and hop in the in the table and go hop inside yourself. And uh, hop around a little bit. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, it's a little surreal when you say it that yeah, way, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. I mean, I, well, I was going to say, Virginia, just, just, just bounce around in there a little bit. And, um, okay, okay. you know, don't mind all the socks and band aids. I had a party earlier, so the kids just left a bunch of stuff in there. No, I, um, I'll avoid those. All right, and, and barely, go ahead and uh, now, now you, you do know how to operate like one of, the, one of them wave situations, right? You open up the thing. And right. then you yep. sing the song of the ocean, right? I sing the song of the ocean? Yeah, you have to summon the waves like a sea siren. So I'm, I'm going to climb oh. up on here. And, okay. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the dials and go ahead and sing the song of the ocean to summon the waves. Okay? Oh, waves, come to me. Oh, ocean, be my friend. And help there us to transform him, form him Jeez. to the things that will not end. Fantastic. Beautiful. Oh, we got great wave action going on back there right now. And oh, look, there's a tiny dolphin in there. What are you doing, tiny dolphin? Tiny He's hanging dolphin. out? Oh, yeah. No, he, he likes your song. He's going to hang out with you while this, while this oh. goes. Tabin, you doing great. good? Yeah, no, the bouncies are out. I'm having a great old time. My ears are flopped in. And oh, yeah. I mean, like you're going to even have a better time because you're about to be something random. I'm just going to spin the wheel. I'm gonna ignore what you just said and just do my best. It's okay, just keep bouncing, keep vibing. Blissfully keep ignorant. Vibing. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and 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 screw the actuator <laughs> and and do this all there and oh, uh, we gotta cool it, leak, cool it, leak. Oh no, oh no. I, hold on, I gotta Jordy LaForge this. Let me just go ahead and do a combat roll under this closing door that's somehow on the machine. There we go. All right, Bouncy. hop up on here and a few more things. Oh, Tabin, Tabin, I just I did want to let you know before I fired this off that um. Your HMO, they're not fighting me anymore, but they are recommending uh, that you take, oh gosh, what is it? Uh, that, that you take fish oil after we're done with this. So, okay. I mean. Well, the, the dolphin and I will, can have fun with our fish absolutely. oil. Absolutely. Hey, hey, Barely, while, while, while you're back there, could you catch some fish for some fish oil that are, that's recommended uh, for Taven? We do this? I, will, I will catch a few fish and uh, squeeze them out. All right, fantastic. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let's get this up and humming this dial, crank this wheel, and let's get ready. Aim it in three, two, one. Oh, 
Oh, there's something bouncing around in there. Hold on, let's uh, let's hike down the way and check this out. Oh my goodness. Maybe it's the socks and the band-aids. Yeah, I was, I'm gonna, oh my. Well, interesting. So you were, you, I, I, I went to the box shape, but I wasn't aware you'd be so small. You're, you're, you're a VHS cassette. My goodness. <laughs> oh my. A VHS cassette. A VHS cassette. A VHS my goodness. That's why I felt different. I, I felt lighter, and I felt a lot, lot, lot older. Yeah. Also. <laughs> and that must be why. I mean, I can't yeah. tell. I mean, I think your VHS. It's a little. It's a little. I mean, this looks like a VHS, right? Like this is this is some Betamax, right? Barely, you'd know. No, no. This is this is definitely a, a VHS. Well, no. I was gonna say it's gotta be Betamax since we're in like the ocean with the fish oil and everything. In right, the water, right. Right. I don't. I don't know, no, man. Well. Interesting. Okay, well, well, Taven, how do you feel as a VHS tape? Well, you know, I feel like I could insert myself into a machine and get eaten when you push it down with the pauses. Okay. Because that's what you have to do right. to get me in there and push it down. And I feel that it would be totally excellent mm -hmm. to go <laughs> on an adventure <laughs> and meet some princesses all of a sudden. Okay. I don't know why. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the little plastic window. You don't have a label on you, so I have no idea which movie you are, but it looks like someone was not kind and did not rewind you. And oh. I don't know. Oh, Gosh, I'm going to have to find a VCR that. in somewhere in here. My goodness. I hate that. Well, I think I already right? did not rewind. Well, I'm, I'm going to hand you over to Barely here for a second. Okay. Well, yeah, well, I, well, I was going to say, well, you, 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 you quoted a 90s movie. Let me hand you to Barely here. Barely, see if you can read what... Because there, there's a lot of there's a lot of gunk on the on the label here. See if you can figure out what movie that Taven might be. Oh, it, well, rub, like, well, I'm a little dust. This, it a just dust. says, it says, it says, it says Hollywood video, not even blockbuster. Oh so God. it's really old. Wow, wow, he's really old. Hollywood I am video. So old. I, am, I, I'm, I guess I'm older than I felt even. <laughs> yeah. It's, right. I, well, it's it's a shame no one rewound rewound whatever cassette tape. You, here we go. Here we go. Ah, this is a beauty, isn't she? This is a VHS record over -er 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 that I got. So it's actually got two Ooh. different tape decks on it. We're not going to, I mean, if we record over Taven, we might lose his soul. So we're not no, going to do, do that. that. No, 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 no. Because then I would be at the mercy of Earl, and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'd put you in a crunch wrap, and it'd be I, terrible. A giant I sentient crunch be. wrap. Yeah, the world has not been kind to Earl. I don't imagine he'd be kind to you. Okay. The, the puppuccino so. would really be a puppuccino in that I case. Just, Right? No kidding. All right, so let's let's go ahead. I'm uh, uh, now if you don't mind, Taven, I'm gonna stick you in here, and before we do anything, I'm gonna have to rewind you. So, are you prepared for this? I, I, uh, this uh, I'm gonna <laughs> okay, sure. Taven, go ahead, just get it. Taven, on. Just, okay. Okay. Taven, just relax and and just re just go limp. Go right, totally right, limp. Yeah, just 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 don't. Okay. I don't want to snap your tape in here, so I'm gonna stick you into the yep. slot. I don't, I don't want that. Push you down. Okay, uh, and I am going to rewind now. And there we go. Okay. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so, so you're rewound now. Interesting. So now I guess we get to figure out what's on this... VHS, you know, barely, it's funny, you, you remember, like, on VHS tapes, sometimes, when you get them, you record over and over and over again, right? So you have these weird little portions at the front where mm -hmm. there'd be a clip of one thing and a clip of another. Sure. I got no idea, I got no idea what, what's on the tape and tape. I don't know, but, you know, when I was looking at it, I did notice, you know, on those old VHS tapes, you mm -hmm. had the little, the little thing that you broke out if you didn't want to record over it. Uh-huh. And then when, you know, when you were poor... Mm -hmm. You you would take those and just put a piece of tape over it so you could record mm. over it. Ah. And he's got a piece of tape over that oh, hole, so it's been recorded over oh, a couple of times. Oh my goodness! Who even knows what's on the Taben tape? Mm -hmm. I mean, Taben, are you with us? You want to go on this journey? I, I, I mean, I guess we've started. We better huh? have absolutely we have. All right. Well, first of all, uh, barely. I, I I did make some popcorn earlier just for you know kicks. Oh, but good. This good. seems appropriate, good. so I'm gonna pull this couch over. Here we go. Nice. And then so in and go ahead David. and get your popcorn. And I gotta find the remote to this thing. Your popcorn, popcorn in this Absolutely, popcorn. absolutely. Yeah. So 
And then the CRT TV, I'm going to smack it a couple of times. Got a little fuzz <laughs> here. I'm going to adjust the tracking. I have no idea what tracking is, but I'm adjusting it. And okay, uh, so tape and tape. Let's see what's on ya. Oh, wait, is that, is that Sony and Cher coming out first on the Maybe? TV? Oh my oh, goodness. So, like the old Sonny and Cher show? Yeah, oh, wow. it looks like it looks like Cher's about to sing a song. Oh, wow. Well, we, I have to share it with you all, so mm -hmm. I'm happy to do so. Mm -hmm. I was oh, going to oh. say, oh, and is I, Cher I, singing it, in Taven's voice? I, I, no, but, but and, and now it's it's kind of, it's, it's wiggly woggling around, oh, and now oh. something else is coming on. Oh, it's the, and yeah, it's, yeah, it's the Magic oh, School Bus. Really my goodness, really I remember really this oh, show. Wow. Look at that! School bus. Right on magic school bus. Taven, how does it feel to be red in the VCR? Well, you know, I, I think that I have to be a little bit high. Am I, like, <laughs> playing so fast that you can't hear me or something? Or what's happening? Well, no, I no, just, we I, you know, well, I, it's hard to hear you over the, you know, cruising on the main street, feel relaxed and feeling okay. good. I mean, the volume's a little good. Oh, oh, nope, we got another one, got another one. Oh. America's Funniest Home Videos. Oh. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh look at oh, that. I've got written My goodness, it's yeah. just a big compilation Sagan. of dogs biting guys in the crotch. Yeah, oh, yeah. the no, 90s. I, I feel actually a little bit ashamed of <laughs> My good. Well, I, I, I plead the fifth. I had nothing to do with it. I promise. Oh no! We're up, up, wait. We gotta switch over. Oh, it's someone's wedding. Look oh, at that. It, oh, it's is it a, beautiful. Well, I, beautiful's a point of view. I mean, it looks I like it's so. a biker wedding. So oh kind of, yeah, and everybody you know, looks pretty drunk and messed up. Yeah. Uh, Taven, do you feel anything different when the clips change? Because right now we're looking at a biker wedding. Yeah. No, I, I felt. I was feeling like I was sharing things. And then I was feeling like I was purple, Not. blue, and, and red. Oh apparently. my goodness. Oh, and yeah, yeah. No, there's... Set. Yeah. There, there's and a fight going on on the screen I, right now, actually. Yeah, there's a bunch of bikers exactly. that are... And then all of a sudden, I felt like I had, like, motor cross written all over me. Right. Oh, oh, no. Okay. I'm going to fast forward a little bit and see. So, Tabin, are you ready for me to fast forward you? Yeah, I, actually, I like this uh, fast... Uh, Thing, so yeah, do that. All right, okay, here we go. And a password. Uh, oh. Skip, 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 whoop, whoop. I'll, I'll stop oh. it. Oh, what do you see, Barry? Like like That's... Like is that... Is that the Charles and Diane wedding? <gasps> Charles and Diane. The, 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 the Princess Diana? Yeah. Is My that the wedding? Goodness. Wow. wow. That's incredible. We went from a biker <laughs> wedding to the royal wedding. My wow, goodness. That's like, oh, and it's fading out again, oh, and oh, yeah. it's just a bunch of kids in a pool. Oh! It's very strange. Right. Wow, yeah. but th look at those haircuts, man. Look at those 90s oh. trunks, too. Yeah, man. those 90s trunks. and that look at all. crazy. Look at all of those. What did they call those with the back and the just in the back and the oh front, oh the rat the, tails the, or the hockey tails. hair or the mullets the rat tail mullets that's mullets. what it was those yeah there's, mullets. A, there's a lot of hockey mullets. hair in this oh, one. Wow. Oh, look, there's there's dad barbecuing I think that's dad anyway well it's somebody's kinda, dad well I mean I, or, or possibly uncle nope he's drinking two beers at once that's someone's uncle okay oh, all right man. yeah man, he's no he took a bite out of the beer and he's drinking out of the side okay we're gonna fast forward a little more Hold yeah on. yeah yeah that's oh it's a cartoon of some sort look at that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cartoon. Fun. Got some kind of. It's like an old. It's like a. It, it, it's Looney Tunes, but I don't quite write. Tabin, is that you in the Looney Tune? Tabin, I didn't realize you were a cartoon star. My goodness. I didn't either. This is a very exciting way. Yeah, yeah. I, I can. This is exciting. I can see you've got a crate from Acme. You should open it up. <laughs> no, Tabin, don't open it up. Don't open it up. Uh, don't, don't open it up. Don't. Don't. Yep. Whoa. Oh, oh man, no. Something's oh. ran by you. And he opened it up, and now he's just standing there blinking with he's all charred. Oh no! Taven! Taven, you're a cartoon! I think you just exploded. You okay? I, I, no, I, I feel good. I, I, I'm, I'm a little confused. Okay. I'm a confusing person, okay. but um, what? I think I'll just stand here and blink some more. Well, well you're, you're, in, you're in a cartoon. Like, cartoon rules apply. What have you always wanted to try in a cartoon? <laughs> Uh, chase my tail around a tree. Okay, whoa! And then find a chipmunk okay. that sits on my head okay. while I pet a squirrel. Okay. 
all at the same time. What you you are doing it all at the same time? And Taven, your tail got away from you. He's he's going to he's going to Albuquerque now. He's got a little suitcase and he's he's oh, hitchhiking. No. There he goes. Yep, there's your oh, tail. Oh no! David! David's tail's gone! Oh right. man, oh. we got it. Alright, well let's let's go I ahead. Guess if I wag, I'll wag in Albuquerque. You'll wag in Albuquerque, man. Alright, let me Oh, and that's the end of the tape. There that's it goes. It, yeah, it's like yep. Oh, it looked popped out automatically. Taven, you, you feel okay? Wow. Taven, you alright? I, I, I feel a little mixed up and confusy and uh, like there's different parts of me that are in different places. Oh, uh, yeah. I feel jazz at the same time. It's a really weird surreal feeling that yeah. you. Well, well, you you are you are a tape. You you were fully rewound and now you are at the end of your tape. So do you feel heavier on one side? Do you feel as if things are concluded? Like how does it feel? I feel very heavier on Okay. <laughs> a lot has happened, you know. It's all that wedding cake. Yeah. A bunch of weddings. There's a lot, a lot of, of weddings cake, in so there. I don't know if that's the reason I feel heavier, or if it's just because of the um, explosion of the box wow. that happened. Mm. Um, so I, I don't know, but it's a weird, surreal experience. But you know, I'm happy I went through it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happy you went through it too. Um, I, of course, there's always the question of like which organs does the portion represent, but I think it probably mm -hmm. okay to transform him back with him being all stacked to one side, but um, I guess I'll, I'll hand you over to Barely for inspection. Well, he was yeah, already... Maybe, he was, maybe make me bounce it around. He was yeah. that way when we transformed him, so we've got him back to the way he was transformed by well, running I, my, into my, the end. Well, so. I, well he, was, he, was, he was halfway there, and oh, I'm afraid if we there. transform him now, he'll be an old man, right? Like, if oh. we transform him that's all the way rewound, then he'll be like he'll be like puppy puppy Taven. But he might and be, if we he might be Uncle Taven. Well, he might be like old man Taven if we transform yeah, well. him back with all the. All right, well, I gonna... mean, do you feel older, Taven? Um. Well, I felt older as soon as this happened because <laughs> you know, the whole, uh, yeah Hollywood video <laughs> thing, and then there was the Betamax possibility. It's like I yeah. I don't think I can feel any older. Right. Well, it's, a, it's a very retro transformation station right. this time around. Well, right, I mean, well, clearly gonna, it's up to you. Uh, do we want to put it uh, back where it was? No, no, we'll put him the way he is. I'm just oh, going to put him in there. All I'm right, put I'm him in the, the, the bouncy house. house. There we go. I'm, I'm pushing and I'm making him bounce. All right, all right, bounce. and uh, go, go ahead go ahead and open up the wave machine again. All right, wave machine is open. Oh, right. Mr. Ocean, come and give us power. All right, Thank you there for she goes, the there she goes. Let's do him in three, two, one. Wow! Hey. You're back. I feel like my I feel like a pup again. He okay. Hey. He's got million, a sticker on yeah, his nose. million dollar question. I was gonna say, where's your tail, Tape? And is it back there? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah there oh yeah, tape. it's just uh, he's not in Albuquerque. It's just yeah, covered in wonderful. stickers. I miss yeah, him. yeah. He's got, a, he's got a he's got a sticker on his nose. I can't seem to rub it off. It's oh no. It looks like it says Hollywood. Hollywood on his nose, but oh no, video is on his butt. Oh no, yeah, David! Yeah, it's like, it's like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, we got video, just but. just look at me in the face, and that way I will be Hollywood. There well, you go. You know, that, I, yeah, you, don't look at the other. I was gonna say you me. probably don't want to show anybody your tuckus for a while, because that because having a, a butt that says video on it's probably gonna raise some questions. Right. Right. So, so, uh, so my friend Dolphin here, I'm gonna put him, my little friend Dolphin, I, I put him back in the ocean. And here's the fish oil that I squeezed out okay. for Taven to take. So take okay. some fish um, oil, Taven. Taven, don't take this the wrong way, but you might want to rub that oil on your butt. Okay. It's, well, up, that's uh, up to you, Taven. Well. <laughs> I'm not going to touch your butt. So. <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're on your own with that, bud. Well, hey, you know what? That's great. I would call that successful. Um, okay. I mean, we wow. turned you turned you into a cartoon. There was all kinds of different VHS goodies on there. I mean, we could possibly yeah. do this again to you and bring you to a found footage festival. Ooh, and, uh, that would be fun. You know, yeah. just remember to transform your bat just as long as you don't have an oily butt. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Exactly. So. Uh, All right. I'm just. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. Hi. I want to squeeze into the tube and get going here because we got a lot of other stuff right, to do right. today. And Locks, you know so. what? Actually, because Taven's nice and lubricated now with the fish oil, he can fit in there with you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and oh. cram him in the tube. So remember, when you leave, do not make eye contact with Earl the Crunch Rat Man, or we he won't. will try and sell you something. Okay. We're just gonna I'm go around the other way. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna close the tube and send you on up. Okay. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Good to see you, Lux. See you next time. Oh. Uh, all right. Wow. Okay. Let's uh. Let's get on the bike. Hey guys. Go. No, hey, hi. No, hey. Earl. We're Earl. Slipping Earl. We gotta go. Don't we, gotta, we gotta, so we gotta go other places. Come on, Earl. My it's, like, it's like, no. bye. Bye, Earl.
now I guess it's time for us to break into our song. Yes. No. Like guess. Break into song. Like Schmigadoon. Yes. <laughs> exactly. I think we should get to our guest. And yes. our guest this week is Manic Nux. Manic a wonderful, Nux. wonderful. He's got better golden dulcet tones than I do, I have to say. He's um, a pretty good singer. Yeah. So every fur, uh, check out your interview. Uh, you'll get a snippet hearing of his wonderful tones and uh, yes. the wonderful stuff that he does. So yeah, let's check him out. Joining us today is Manic. And is it Manic Nux or Nukes? Nux. You got Nux. it right the first time. All yes. right. Manic Nux is joining Nux. us today on our podcast. Hi there. My name is Taven. I am a pup bark bark Manic. So nice to see and hear you on this eve as it were. So thanks for being on the show. How are you on this fine evening? Thanks for having me, frankly. And uh, I'm actually doing all right. This is a pleasant way to end an evening. So I'm very happy to You're be here. winding down. Winding down. It's better than winding up at this time of day. That's a whole oh lot my easier goodness. to wind down. Yeah. I mean, if oh, you yeah. want to drink like a pot of coffee right now so that um, you don't sleep for the next few yeah. days, even though you want to, you could do that too. But probably that's not the right <laughs> way to do it. The problem is I will still sleep and I'll just have bad sleep. Oh, and okay. just will not yes. make me One happy. of those. Okay, <laughs> right. good, good. Then don't do that. Don't do All that. Right. So take Hi. it. Hi. Have you got some questions for Manny? I do. Well, why don't you oh. get to them? <laughs> Okay, Manic, yes. could I ask you some questions and would you like to answer them? Yes and yes. Wonderful. Respectively. And, and I guess hopefully they're honest answers, but I guess we'll see what unfolds in this. So first of all, did you know that you are a furry? Yes. Good. I mean, this is kind of a shock to some furs. That fur, they're like, what? I had no idea. I better go tell my parents or something. You know, it's one of those uh, horrible times. So I'm glad you already know that. That's not a surprise. A little bit self-aware. A little self-aware. Good. It's good to have that as self-awareness. A little self-aware. Uh, how long do you think you have been a furry? And how long have you been in the fandom? Huh, that's a good question. Uh, really, I didn't really understand what it was until I found the fandom. So... Uh, I could argue that I was in the, I was afraid longer than the fandom, but I, I really shouldn't because it really didn't matter at the time. It didn't make any sense to me, so it, I didn't understand okay. what it was. But it was around 2001. Oh, so long time. I've been I've been around in some form or fashion since about then. Yes. Very good. And what? How did you discover this wonderful thing? You said you you didn't quite know. I think that's kind of like a lot of us. Like, what is this crazy thing? I want to shy away from all this craziness. But at some point, you're like, hey, you know what? This is me. So how did that come about? Uh, <laughs> couple a couple different directions actually. The main one was Sonic. Huh. I came into this fandom like many others at the time through Sonic, and um, also weirdly enough, uh, Cats Don't Dance was, which is actually one of the. I can get into that later, but Cats Don't Dance is one thing that got me into it, hmm. and a strange world that was that was a uh, that was people who wanted to have tails. I'm not even mm -hmm. joking. <laughs> It was a community of people that wanted to have okay. tails, and that was where I got it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so like not even a just a generic, I just want to have a tail, and I belong to this community that I just want to have a tail. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Everybody wanted tails, and that's where it... That's part of where it came from. I have from, so. not heard of this <laughs> interesting. interesting, wonderful... So at one point, you were like, I want a tail. Okay, mm -hmm. nice, nice. I would love a tail, yes. Was there any specific type or brand, as it were, of tail. I guess there's not a brand of tail, but... A Gucci tail. Gucci. There yeah, go. I want a Gucci tail. Um, I, I really don't remember specifically if I had a, had a tail in mind. I probably had a cattail in mind, in all frankness, because a, a longer, more sleek cattail rather than a fluffy cattail, so... That's probably what I was thinking, but I don't know. I was young and I was naive. I, I was naive. I was young. I needed the money, you know, that, that typical thing. Yes. So that actually makes sense because that segues way into you wanted a kitty tail. So tell us about your fursona. Where did kitty come from? What was the inspiration? How long have you had kitty? All that good stuff. Well, in I started off with a Sonic character, as I mentioned, and like I came in through Sonic and it wasn't very long after it was about maybe 2002, 2003 that I decided on Cat. And it was partly due to, I know it's another butt of many jokes. It was partly due to Garfield and nice. Heathcliff. Nice. <laughs> and also the main impetus between behind being the orange tabby that I am was Danny from Cats Don't Dance. And Cats Don't Dance was and still is my favorite animated film. 
Oh, okay. And uh, he's an orange tabby in it. And I just love the character. And it's sort of where it was birthed from, so to speak. <laughs> so, okay. So this is an animated show. I, I can tell Barely doesn't know what we're talking about either. The, this Catstone dance thing. It, it's mm-hmm. No, I, I made a note. Okay. I'm going to look that up. <laughs> it was a movie in, uh, it was a movie in 1997 oh. that was wow. developed by Turner. Uh, it was one of Turner's only two movies. Mm. And unfortunately, it, it never actually was released by Turner. It, Turner was purchased by Warner Brothers, the Turner Animation. <laughs> Did Hooch release it instead? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh God! Oh geez, that was good. I should. That took me a second. <laughs> but mm. but no, the doggy didn't take over the kitty show. There were there dogs were, in it though, okay. so that's that's important. There so there are all different types of animals in it. So it's not nice. just cats. I will have to check this out. This is wonderful. Great. So kitty. So tell us about the, this tabby. You've got a tabby. Tabby has glasses. And it, is Tabby part of you or an extension of you or what is all that good in deep stuff? Well, Manic is the idealized me in almost every possible way. It's who I want to be. It's who I want to try to be as a person. Uh, so disregarding the the visage of a cat, basically the character is who I want to be. The positive presentation, the positive, the specific yeah, positive. Yeah, uh, who it just who? How I represent myself is what I intend to be, and it's sort of a self fulfilling prophecy because I try to think in ways that he would act, and hopefully it comes through my daily oh, cool. actions as a normal human being. So it's I, I I like to believe that they work in conjunction. Like this belief in this character is is also affecting who I am as a person. So because it's what I want to be. Yes, that's very cool. I think I feel you know we we've, we've talked to other furs on the show and everything, and we've talked to we had a, a Sharon Roberts for example from First Science on, and uh, she was talking a lot about mm-hmm. the. The persona and the how it makes people better uh, striving towards the persona and that interplay and all that good stuff. So it's pretty cool how in this fandom we have all that nice connection and we have connection to other furs because we all have that connection and it just feeds on itself and it's all crazy fluff and amazing all at the same time. It's very, it was the word, it's very, it's, a, it's very uplifting, but it's also very mm-hmm. rewarding to know that people are trying to be more like a good thing, like that they're trying to work on themselves in a way that they they see themselves as a certain thing and then they can reach for that because they they can they can visualize it mm-hmm. they can put it in a form where it is it's attainable in, a, in some form of fashion and the most important thing is that, is that that form is a fluffy form yes i mean or scaly okay okay i'm not trying to be segregated or feathery you know what I mean. <laughs> so i see there in your room back there in the corner you have a doggy or something oh that is actually victor that's one hi, of the other Victor. characters, yeah. Yep. Say hi, Victor. Uh, hi, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's he's a little uh, he's a, he's another representation of um, an appreciation of past things. Really, um, he comes from my love of two specific things really snoopy and uh, wishbone oh okay uh, I've, I, so and and also and my brain completely has forgotten another character that i had in mind and i just and that, that doesn't bode well for my uh, my memory <laughs> 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 but i lo- i've always loved wishbone and i've always loved snoopy and um, I know he's not a beagle. He's a, he's a Jack Russell Terry. Oh, the other one is actually his origin origin story, and that is Nipper. If you um, if you're, if you're all familiar with the RCA Victor dog, the picture oh. of 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 his master's voice mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. he's staring into the yes. the, the gramophone, uh, because of my love of old electronics and old audio and uh, a lot of the 30s and um, design elements and just just things that have happened and had happened at that time because of all the explosion in in, in technology. It, I really appreciated that what that represented. It's it, it was a the dog heard his master and responded to it in a way that we could have never ever anticipated until that point in time in history. So it was very very impressive to me. So I've always liked that. And he basically is he wears a, a, a Victrola key around his neck, oh. specifically an homage to. In canon, he's sort of the descendant of Nipper. So that's that's what he is. Oh, cool! And he's a very cutie. 
too. So that's wonderful. Speaking of nice mm -hmm. glasses, by the way, you have fabulous glasses, sweetie, might I say. Thank you. I appreciate that. I love them. I, I fell in love with them when I saw them. <laughs> I, I bet you did. I, I I mean, we'll talk, of course, uh, in, in just a few minutes about your Telegram channel and everything. And that's one of the first things I saw. Like, I that's the first thing I saw was the glasses, really. I couldn't see anything else. But, I mean, you were wearing them. It's not like you just had them sitting around and you took <laughs> a video of just your glasses sitting there and you posted that. And everyone, what am I talking about? Never mind. So... <laughs> Speaking of singing, because we were talking about singing just now, because I just said it, you have this very, very, very nice voice, which I know you've heard lots of times, but you have this wonderful, wonderful singing voice, and it's amazing. Thank you. And you're welcome. So please tell us about um, how long have you been singing? What type of training have you had? All that good stuff. Well, it's the one the one passion I could say that I've had since I can remember anything. Um, I, I don't I, I have a very bad case of ADD where I will be really interested in something for a while and that it'll eventually dissipate and I'll still be interested in it, but it won't be a passion anymore. Mm -hmm. But singing has always been that one. It's always been there at the top of my list. And I mean, my effort in it had always ebbed and flowed depending on the time, but it wasn't until I was about six. 16, 17, uh, maybe a little earlier, 15, 16, 17 or something like that, that I started actually working on developing it. I had a bit of, uh, there were some reasons why I never actually tried developing it earlier than that, but not, not, not really important, but I finally went to a vocal coach and for about eight or eight years, I went to two different vocal coaches and was professionally trained on how to use it. Mm -hmm. And um, then I worked in multiple, multiple case and multiple situations. I worked as, as some strange I worked in some strange jobs doing my singing, actually. Oh, but okay. Yeah, I worked as a backup singer for an Elvis impersonator. Uh <laughs> well, it's one for the money, two for the show. You get ready now, go get on the don't you. Step on my boots, shoot. Okay, that's an interesting, fun combination there. <laughs> that let, Let's explore that a little bit more. So how did you get to be a backup singer for Elvis? Or well, an Elvis impersonator? It was a very strange thing. I think I had actually offered my uh, singing services. I was, I was trying to be a little bit more proactive about offering them and, um, and scouting about for different opportunities. And I posted it to Craigslist way back when Craigslist was fairly oh. new. And a gentleman reached out to me and he specifically was clear about how odd it sounded. And he was an Elvis impersonator who actually was pretty dang good i'd say um he really did a solid late elvis and i don't mean like everybody thinks of fat elvis no it's not fat elvis like he never was really fat elvis he was just a bigger and he yeah he had a stomach but he was never fat elvis really he was just a, a very right. very much more flamboyant elvis and he did a fantastic mm -hmm. job actually at playing him and the funniest part about him is the guy was a world record holder in the 90s for deadlifting so it was a very strange okay. uh environment <laughs> no kidding okay wow, that's, okay and, uh, and you live to tell about i mean that would kind of be scary i would think but uh you made it through it was fun in its own weird way and i'm glad i did it it was very very enlightening and i actually have appreciation for elvis now i never had an appreciation I, for elvis oh, there you go so hey you just well, never know good. where you uh, might find anything these mm -hmm. days apparently how long did you do that for i did that for about Two or three years, actually. Oh, okay. So it was it was a, like a good little mini career type thing for mm -hmm. you. Absolutely, cool. yeah. It was it was it was a little a little thing. I did it, I did it. We had different gigs that we did every uh, every few weeks, and it was just the side thing that I did, and it was enjoyable to a point. Stressful at times, but enjoyable. I mean, I did other things as well, other different gigs similar to it. I worked as a frontman to a couple bands, I, I, like, like wedding bands and things like that. And the uh, wedding I've, singer, as it yeah, were. Yeah, in a lot of cases, it was a wedding singer in a couple of situations, but like perform uh, um, professional performance bands and things like that. Did did you ever um, do do a duet with Adam Sandler? Oh man, I, that would have been uh, that would have been interesting. <laughs> would have been a, that would have been the most famous person I've ever met. I think. <laughs> you know what have, would have been cool is if you and Adam Sandler did a duet backing for Elvis impersonator at a wedding. I think that might break the internet. I think so. <laughs> Not because of me, okay. but because of Adam Sandler and Elvis. I think yes. that might break the oh. internet. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would break the internet. Yep. Nice, yep. nice. Mm -hmm. So you kept working on singing and profession and uh, working with a coach and everything, and you just kept working on yourself. And here you are today. Is that how it goes? 
Yeah, it's one of those things too that like after a certain period of time, like when I first got going, when I was really trying to grow my actual regular career, like I, I was actually going to go to um, school for a couple different things and I, and I was going to go and my parents, bless them, offered to foot the bill for me to go either to LA or New York. Um, mm. But to 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 uh, audition and work at becoming a professional singer. And in some ways, I regret I didn't take them up on that. But I sat there and I thought to myself, I, I have to be a little bit pragmatic. I knew how difficult it was to do and become a successful professional singer in either location. And I knew that I didn't want to I didn't want to grow up, go, go and grow resenting my my passion in some ways. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And I chose not to do that. So, and and then for many years, I didn't really practice as well and as much as I should have. And partly what I'm doing lately with a lot of my singing is is a lot of practice and me just forcing myself to do things and to to learn from them and become better at every single thing that I and get at, at, at every single type of genre that I go for, even if it doesn't nice. fit me. I try. <laughs> yeah, which is one thing I know that you happen to do recently. Actually, we're there. So let's let's talk about sure. that so um you've got a lot of lot of um, platforms that we can find you on one of which is your manic sings telegram channel and um so when i when i went there to check it out i was very excited that the first thing i saw was your silver chair which was just very very exciting to me for for many reasons so for all you first first of all i mean many shout outs to manic and everything but one shout out is he does uh silver chairs like Old school, like their first album, long ago, Silver Chair, like when they were known as High Chair, <laughs> Silver Chair's um, Tomorrow, and um, he does a really great job with it. And, and it was wonderful. And I think um, you had said that it was that was a song that was a little bit outside of the normal genre you would usually perform. Very much. I don't oh. do. I, I'm. I, I know my voice is not as suited to heavier, uh, heavier rock. I'd say so. It was a mm -hmm. definite departure for me. <laughs> I thought you did a really great job with it, though. I mean, Thank you. I, I really do. Yes. What? So, what genres do you normally um, perform and do and like to do? Well, my voice seems to be most fitted to different forms of jazz, R and B, oh, okay. and of all things, country, like classic country. Oh, okay. And it's weird because I I never thought I'd be much of a country singer, but there are every single time I go into a country song, I I I, I actually out of all the recordings that I have made, I go back and listen to them and I realize that I appreciate the sound that I'm getting with my country songs and my jazz really? songs. And I'm like, I never, I'm not a huge country fan. I'm yeah, like, it's is fine. That, is that disappointing? <laughs> It's not really no, because that's the thing. It's like it's not really disappointing because I can't sing modern country. Modern country, I can't sing. It just it's its oh, own okay. weird world. So I can appreciate what I'm what I'm doing. It's just I never was a huge country fan, but now I'm looking for more country songs of the classic country variety because I do think they're excellent. They are excellent pieces of music. Really, I think they're mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. So it's it's sort of pushing me in a direction to learn more about that and and go in a direction that I didn't think I would go. Yeah, expanding your horizons, expanding the fluff yes that's great so on your um telegram channel then mm -hmm. what all can we find there what usually do you post how often do you post things there well for a while there and what i'm trying to do so right now i it's a little bit of a hiatus because i'm working on i have an, i have a number of irons in the fire so to speak with a number of other things and my focus has been elsewhere but i once once things calm down a bit i'll be back to doing these regularly what i tend to do is i try to do a either one-off or a couple quick like changes, like a couple build on recordings of a song that I just am interested in trying. And I try to do that every other day. Uh, <laughs> okay. For one thing it does is it helps me just exercise my voice Two, it helps me learn a new song, get better with remembering lyrics, which is my Achilles heel, honestly. And hmm. it also is incredibly valuable for me because I have always been intimidated by recording software. Like I, oh. gen I genuinely am intimidated by recording software in terms of music, and um, so okay, it's because so I you specified yeah. music. So this podcast recording is okay because we're not doing music. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's because of the mix. Like, it's not because of the, um, like, in terms of voices, like having the voices and having them chat and having them just interact, there's not a requirement for the, the voices to be mixed in with music in a way that feels oh, homogenous. Yeah, okay, okay. 
it's it's that mm-hmm. it's that mastering and that mixing that always intimidated me and i'm trying to I learn see. it more i'm not doing a very good job with it recently i've noticed but i'm oh. trying <laughs> I, I i noticed on on your channel you you've been saying a lot like i'm not too happy with how this turned out but here it is <laughs> is does it come down to the mixing is that what you've been unhappy with no i now some of it is just my performance and what i do in a lot of cases oh, okay. is i try to go through it straight and i try to find the best recording uh, that I've done. Like I try to do it a couple times, but I try to find okay. the best I've done. I don't do a lot of splicing. I, I basically what you're hearing is mostly a single take, barring a couple minor changes here. If I had a mistake in one place and I was really ticked off about that or something like that, but uh-huh. a lot of it is the recording. Frankly, I will say that much. Like I, I go back and listen to them now, and I'm like, I really like the way my mic sounds for certain music, but other 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 songs it just does not fit because I have a ribbon mic that I'm hmm, using mostly now, and it has a totally different sound than the one I'm using right here. But hmm. it's it all depends. And also another reason why I say that too is because it helps me just push things out there because I have been over the years very, very, very intimidated by putting out something that I am, I know I'm critical of, of myself. Mm -hmm. And this helps me get beyond a little bit of my fear, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. You've already said a bunch of ways. You're you're like pushing yourself. You're becoming a better, better fur. And that's, that's wonderful. That's great. Yeah. I, I, we've talked to other furs that say how the internet and the social media and everything helps them semi and an anim mon what's the word i'm looking for anim min anim faucet anonymity that word anonymity anonymity yes that yes. word semi that can help them put things out and and help them yes. a little bit um improve and and i apparently need Lots of help improving in saying words because I I am not good at that. <laughs> I am just a pup. That is my disclaimer with that. If it makes you feel any better, I do that all the time with long words. Like I'm, I know how to say that, and I go to say it, and five times I cannot get it out for the life of me, and I don't know what it is. I oh oh yeah no, we are of like fluff right there. I have um well barely knows. There's been numerous times on the pup episode on the. A pup cast here that um I have not been able to say a word that I rehearsed five million times. But anyway, like the word the, like how did I even just say the word the? I don't know. That's probably not even the word I meant to say. Anyway, enough about me and my illiteracy, I guess. So how can we find your Telegram channel? What's a good way to go there and check it um, out? Well, it's just, it's at T, uh, letter T dot me, M-E slash manic, M-A-N-I-C-K sings, S-I-N-G-S. So if you know my name, which I, I go by manic with a K at the end and just add sings to the end. So T dot me slash manic sings. With no underscore nope. or anything. That's typical telegram yep. channel name okay nice nice so yes every for check that out and so other things you have you have a lot of things i think some other things you have is i saw you've been doing a lot of collabs collaborations with with other furs and fluffs and stuff so uh tell us about um your collaborations you have done and are involved with and, and all that good it's stuff. funny because they are my um this is one area where i'm i'm fairly new at and i really appreciate it when people are like let's do one together i'm like okay and then i get very nervous about it and i end up procrastinating on it because i'm like i'm never going to do this right <laughs> and so i fall behind and I, I i it's something i'm trying to improve on and i've i've been able to do it fairly fairly well for the last two collaborations that i've done or the last two people i've collaborated with i should say um nice. but i have i have a few more collaborations coming up that are actually a little bit more involved where i don't cons- I, this is one of those things where a lot of people will either agree or disagree depending on your perspective i don't see myself as a legitimate musician i see myself as a singer i see myself as a vocalist i see myself as a semi musician that is not to put me down. I, I don't mean to put myself down in that meant that this that has nothing to do with it. It's just I don't understand theory well enough. I don't play any instrument mm, well I enough. I, I play piano just a tiny, tiny bit. But because of that, I have something to reach for and become better as a musician and uh, and and hopefully become that musician that I want to be. So it's it's not to tear anybody down or anybody or myself down or anything like that who's are who are singers, because there are many singers who are musicians. It's there's a there's a distinct difference. I see. But the two collaborations I'm working on are actually forcing me to become a better, a better musician and it's making me procrastinate more because they're actually asking me to write vocal lines, which is something I have oh. looked and wanted to do. It's just I've been I am intimidated by it. 
So I, I'm working on it. It's just taking time. Another chance to improve self. Yeah. If, if I can get <laughs> nice, over the intimidation nice. factor, yes. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Well, I mean, I have to say you just have to just keep trucking mm -hmm. along since you're a semi-vocalist. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I. <laughs> sorry, no, sorry. No, it's fine. My brain had to stop for a moment. There. <laughs> Did, I, I don't know. I barely got it. Did you get what I was trying to do there, I Manic? I think so. I think so. <laughs> okay, well, uh, but how oh, about... Oh, Taven, how, you're going to have to go I to your box. So, so... Manic, mm -hmm. when you listen to this episode when it comes out, you listen to that, and then we'll see if you fully get it. I'll, I'll refrain from telling you what it was, okay. and this will be your fun challenge to find out what was Taven even talking about. With the, okay, anyway, hi. So, uh, so you've got some nice collaboration stuff that you're. Oh yeah. We're just going to say you're working on because you're going to do well, it. Yeah. And you'll get better for it because of the intimidation things. Yeah, and and, and frankly, I I want to say more than anything, I appreciate the fact that people want to work with me so like for example uh, two of the two of the last collaborations i've done were were with indie timber and um polar the lion and i can't <laughs> thank them enough for even considering me to add to their music because they're basically doing all the work uh, as musicians and i'm coming in and i feel like i'm just adding a small piece if anything so it's very much um appreciated and i really embrace being able to do it so i, I try to do right by them and right by the recordings as much as i can well i mean you you've got this like amazing voice so i, I don't think you have anything to worry about i know you can say that <laughs> but that's what i say so that's great do you perform like so i mean you do the recordings and everything but do you like perform live ever lately i have not um that's actually one of my next goals is to do more performance live. Uh, it's been a bit since I've been in perf uh, live performance bands. I think I perform better live. Frankly, I think my recordings oh, are okay. a um, shadow of what I can do live. Um, but I, I, it's one of the reasons why I'm attacking them so hard is because it is a it is an area that I felt I was lacking in. Ah, okay. I see. I see. Cool. Cool. So do you have a favorite out of all the projects and performances you've done? Do you have any favorites, like things that stick out to you? Like, yeah, that was really good. I really liked it. Or maybe, no, I hated that one. And that's why it's one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, I was actually going through my record, some of my recordings before this. Like I was trying to find which one maybe kind of stuck in my head. What's really weird is I have found that I nitpick every single one of them I record. <laughs> But there are a few okay. that I have stuck out to me as like, that one was pretty good. I like that one. <laughs> it's like, it wasn't great, <laughs> but it was pretty good to my ears. Um, <laughs> okay. A lot of, and I think the ones that actually make me the happiest, I think are the ones that I feel I do a good job at performing songs that Nat King Cole had performed and trying to make them my own, oh. but oh, okay. somehow, somehow making sure that the song itself is respected and Nat King Cole's respected because Nat King Cole is one of my ultimate favorite singers of all time. And, mm. uh, and I am, I am overwhelmed and happy whenever I feel I did a good job with it. Like, uh, I did the Christmas song last year and I, I was very, very happy with it. Um, I actually did a video of it because I was very, very happy with it. Like an actual like video video, not just most of my videos on Twitter are, uh, videos of me singing partly to show that it's one take and partly to get it on Twitter because Twitter didn't like audio recordings until fairly recently. So mm. uh, it was a mixture of both of those things. Um, but this one was an actual video where I did, like, we, I did some editing and actually work on it. So I was uh, very happy with that one. But like songs like nice. Mona Lisa and, but I mean, uh, things like The Gambler made me pretty happy and it wasn't perfect by any means, but it made me pretty happy that it sounded pretty good but, to me. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, well, as you say, we're all our own worst critics and we'll always not find anything perfect but you know if you're happy with it then that actually is a win speaking of a win could you do a quick silver chair for us or something that you want to do silver chair oh, okay oh i wasn't i wasn't ready for this give me a second um i i do i do that sometimes no that's fine <laughs> give me give me one moment actually because now i'm because i'm on the, on the spot my my brain which is always terrible for lyrics now just oh went completely. i said lyrics okay yeah uh let me see one second here okay all right so i can do this now i'm actually more i'm actually more anxious because i can see i can see my own face and i can see you barely <laughs> 
It's weirdly how it's how how that affects me. Like I can I can I can hide my no, camera. No, you're fine. You I go. can perform oh, in, there, okay. in front of an audience, but for some reason, like uh, like when I perform in a situation like this, it gets me a little nervous. All right, let me think here. It's twelve o'clock and it's a wonderful day. I know you hate me, but I'll ask anyway. Won't you come with me to a place in a little town? The only way to get there is to go straight down. There's no bathroom and there is no sink. The water out of the tap is very hard to drink. Very hard to drink. And that's the first whole verse. Sorry, I just now didn't know where to go with it. <laughs> it is the first whole verse. That was wonderful. It is wonderful. Yeah, I've always um, loved that song a lot. So, so thank you for that. It's a wonderful song. It really is. And I think Silver Chair gets a little less credit than they should get because they were so young. Yeah. They were ridiculously young. Well, as I said, they used to be known as High Chair for that reason. <laughs> fair, fair, totally fair. No, yeah, they were Australian, I think, right? And mm -hmm. yep, Australian, 15, and they 16, were like yeah. fifteen, sixteen, yeah. yeah. And and uh, it was a weird sound because they they sort of were like I think people threw them out a little bit with the baby with the bathwater because it was a time where everybody was doing grunge and everybody was uh, was sort of copying Nirvana. Yeah, but in a lot of ways they created their own sound, and I really liked it. Oh yeah, I I, I love that their first album, Frog Stomp. I, I love that album, Frog Stomp. Yeah. And then they've got some good stuff on the next album, and then you know it goes downhill from there, like mm. like <laughs> like yeah. anything. So for any fur, so that you heard you heard it here, and it was amazing. And uh, when he does the chorus, it's just uh, he does a really amazing job. So shout out to him. Go check out his Telegram channel so that you can hear him sing the chorus and the full song. It's really great, and other songs. He's got other great stuff too. So speaking of other great stuff, uh, you also do some streaming. Where what is your <laughs> you know what all the stuff. When when do you stream? What is the stuff that we can find there? Uh, where can we find it? I, I think I'm in a, I'm a state of perpetual blushing, and I'm glad that I have an orange light on me because <laughs> it's actually like reducing it on the camera here. Like I'm looking at myself. But so I, I stream on Twitch. It's mostly because honestly, it's there's a couple reasons why I started doing it is because I like to I, I like to perform. I'm, I'm a performer mm -hmm. and by by just how I am. Performer? Well, I mean, you're a kitty, so you're a performer. Yeah. Performer, yeah. Performer, yeah. I'm a performer. And um, it helps me. It helps me. Weirdly enough, it gets me to do things that I want to do, but I've always had a harder time convincing myself to do it. Like things that I just are, are, are they're not things I have to do for another reason. Things I don't have to do for somebody else. Things, the things I have to do for work or this or that. Mm -hmm. It legitimately is I want to do these things. So it helps me. It helps give me a reason to do them. And one of those things is video gaming. Oh. One of those things is working on electronics, uh, like repairing electronics. Um, another one of those things is weirdly Legos. Like I, Old I haven't school. done Legos in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I, they kind of, it kind of forces me into doing them, which is nice because it, it sets time for me aside to do these things. Mm -hmm. And if people enjoy it, I'm happier because I like I'm I'm a ham. I know I'm a ham, and uh -huh. I I like the audience at times. So I, I like, at times, you know, every now and then. No, you're you're as you say, a performer. You're an entertainer. I can tell. So yeah, you like to do that, make people happy, and that in turn makes you happy, and that's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You were. I saw you were. You've been streaming recently. Resident Evil Six. Yeah. Actually, that was. That's a, a lot of fun because I it's with a friend of mine, uh, my friend Notch. Uh, he, he's a he's a friend from Ohio, Notch Rhino, and um, we decided to do it because I was doing Resident Evil Five with a friend of mine, and I'm a huge Resident Evil fan, Apparently. but I never got around to playing some of the newer games. Oh. So I, I could say I'm a huge fan, and I never got around to playing the games. Of course, <laughs> that Poser. makes for a huge fan, right? Oh uh, yeah, but uh, Notch was like, "We got to play six. You're gonna hate it. We gotta play six. And I'm like, all right, I've heard it's a trash fire. And it really kind of is a trash fire of a game, but it's fun to play with another person because you're both experiencing the trash fire and realizing that you're both suffering equally <laughs> and you're having fun doing it. So nice. it's <laughs> there's a very there's a masochistic opponent. Yeah, we're suffering and we love it. 
Yes, ex- cool. <laughs> exactly. Nice. And it's good. For, and it, frankly, if it goes back to the audience thing. It, it actually works in the favor of the audience because apparently that's something that people can enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's uh, you're all you're for, for a little while. You're a big family all together suffering in a trash fire, burning the fluff off. Yeah, that, yes. that, that's great. Yes. That's fun and exciting. So what is your uh, Twitch channel? It's most of where things you can find me. It's, it's just like that. It's twitch.tv slash manic nux m-a-n-i-c-k-n-u-x so my normal handle manic nux is where you can find me on twitch nice nice and uh other social media twitter and everything well you have a linked tree page i think and and so we can find uh all your stuff on that page yeah i it's funny because i um i just recently found linktree and I, it's kind of a nice feature. I've seen other similar tools like it, and I'm trying to actually log into Linktree just to double check on myself here. But I mostly have, uh, I mostly focus on, I have, I have Twitter, uh, I have my Telegram, I have my Twitch, and there are ancillary things like my, my my singing account on Twitter, and I mean on on Telegram, and also different. I think I I think I might have put different links on there for some other events that I run uh, or I, I help with mm. too. But I need to do I need to put some of them in there actually because I just thought about that and I need to put some more of that, more in there. So. It's helping me. <laughs> it's helping me come up with ideas. Nice, nice, good. Yeah. So uh, every first check him out on different platforms. Is oh, you're still trying to find your link tree. Well, and if if put it this way, uh, my my last pass would behave. I think it will behave. Yeah, it behaved. That time it behaved. So we're good. Uh, just give me. Uh, actually, no, it didn't behave. There it is. It behaved finally. <laughs> Yay, technology. <laughs> there we go. Come on, sign on in sign in it's doing its thing there we go yeah i I, on on it right now i just have twitch telegram my singing channel twitter wapafa which is my the event that i um i I chair Mm -hmm. uh here in western pa and um and a lot of people work hard on like we work very hard on it (laughs) it's it's important to us and uh, my soundcloud which i used to i don't do it as much recently because i have the telegram channel but i used to post uh, uh recordings there and my YouTube, which has nothing on it, but I have it there anyways, so I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I noticed that. There's like three videos. <laughs> yeah. But but they're great videos. So yeah, so every first still check that out. So something you just... Uh, oh, <laughs> I should say. So what is the web address of your link tree? I don't think I... <laughs> oh, it's... It's again, it's simple. It's simple. If, if, you, if there's anything to remember, just link, remember the link tree. It's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Manic Nux. M a n i c k n u x. It's a theme for me. Most of my um, my links are always manic knocks. <laughs> well, it, it, I mean, it makes it easier for for every for I think. Yeah. So you hit on this before. So you we're like fluff because I want to move into cons. And so you mm-hmm. are the chair of. Uh, mm-hmm. Tell us the the con that you're the chair of. <laughs> uh, Western PA Furry Weekend, uh, or Wapafa, or however you want to say it for short. Wap Wapafa Wapafa Wapafa. Yeah, it said. Many different ways and that's fine it's it's all up to the end user who, who however they want to say it but it's a it's an event that's held in october every year so in the fall okay because it is an indoor and outdoor event held in a fairly it's a, it's a pretty enormous plot of land in a in a county park here in western pa and near pittsburgh and the whole idea behind it is that the best way to describe it is in its adult day camp and i know that sounds really um like it, it kind of takes away from it. And I'm trying not to use that as a term because I know some people don't <laughs> like that term, but in the best possible way, especially in the furry um, fandom, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, you, it's a, it's a charity event. So there's a huge charity auction. Uh, we, we are proud to say that we have, and we've had numerous, numerous times, at least two or three times in the past f- three, four years, have been the highest per capita donation amount so the highest per capita dollars of donation of any con in the entire world oh wow wow um so our our per person donation amount was the highest uh, out of out of the out of the people we have per person Mm -hmm. and like the average and um it was out of the world it was uh, the highest and we've had we've we've been very happy about that it's (laughs) actually because people like to donate yes yeah but it's we all we provide all food 
We provide, we have people who cook on, on, on the location. There's a huge commercial kitchen that we cook all the food there for, for people to eat. And that's a wow. three meals a day uh, for, for three days. So you cook it for them to eat, not just like throw at each other or something. But yes. They eat it. Correct. Yes. Yeah. For eat. You gotta be specific. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. We cook for, for food to eat and we have an outdoor, we have an outdoor large bar in which we serve local a lot of local but also some not so local uh, beers ciders meads and we provide a uh, local soda companies especially one soda company right now we have different panels associated but it's not really about the panels it's more about the environment in which you can hang out and enjoy people's company and chill out in a lot of ways cool because it's it's really about that while we do have a lot of things going on during the event, it's mostly about that. So, and you said that's uh, that's in October. Are there specific dates and a website you can yes. let us know our listeners to go to if they're interested? Yep, it's a uh, wpafw dot org dot org. So wpafw dot org, and um, the dates are October eighth through the tenth. It's eighth, ninth, okay, and tenth. Eighth, ninth, and tenth. Yes, nice, right. nice. And um, how much is registration, and where can they go to find out more and register? Okay. So if you go to wapafa.org and you go to the registration tab at the top, you can go to register there. The basic membership, which gets you all the food you can eat uh, and any regular drinks that aren't part of the bar, that's 55. But if you want food and alcohol, as much alcohol basically as you want, and I'm, I, I say that in yeah, that's scary. honesty, we, we, <laughs> we, well, we don't let people drive. Okay. So if you're, you're, we don't let people drive. We actually shuttle, we don't have a hotel on the site. What we do is we shuttle people to and from the oh, hotel okay. Okay. through our own shuttles. And um, it's $80 for the weekend. Okay. Nice. So, uh, and then there's a super sponsor, which helps us a lot. But with the super sponsor, what we have actually done, and one thing we're very proud about with the super sponsor is that we find a local or relatively local artist and we hire them for every single super sponsor membership that you get, that we get. Each person gets a personalized badge that is a style for that year's Wapafa, mm. but it is their character. Nice. Hmm. And so it's a, it's a fully drawn like con badge. For their, wow. each of their characters, and we we pay the artist for each of those specifically what they normally would or around what they would normally charge. We we negotiate that, but we we pay them and give them that. Uh, oftentimes, sixty to seventy commissions in that sense nice. to do wow. well, and, and they get they get more representation for themselves. It's like a win win for everyone. <laughs> we we hope so. We hope that that comes across that way too, and and. And for the most part, it's worked out really well every year and everybody loves the badges. And um, we provide that and we also provide a, a special event every year. Uh, we're still working on this year's events. So we haven't announced it yet. But in the past, what we've had is a wine and chocolate party where we, we bring in different wines nice. and different chocolates mm -hmm. and have pairings. Uh, we've done uh, different types of whiskey that includes scotch, oh, barely. bourbon, rye, and things like that. Uh, yum, we, yum, we help. Yum, yum. Yeah, exactly. We help educate what the differences are, and we have done diff we have done different things, of course, over the course of the years, uh, depending on the feeling of the year. Uh, we did a mead, and we did a sake tasting, nice. and so it, it all depends on the year. Mm -hmm. Cool, neat, and that's an incredibly reasonable price for the stuff that you get. I mean. Eighty dollars for all the meals and drinks. I mean, good lord, you can't touch that anywhere. Yeah, we try to. We we try to keep yeah. it low because we try to make sure that like we're not. We make very 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 clear that we are not trying to up the coffers here. We we try to do what we can with the money we get, mm -hmm. and we don't like wasting it anywhere. And um and we want to make sure people get feel like they're getting a value out of it because it's it's not meant to be. We're we're, we're a nonprofit. We we really well, don't. We yeah, want I mean, we want we want the money to go to the charity. So what we try to do is keep the price of the tickets down low enough that people have extra money to put to the charity. Absolutely, yeah. And in all fairness, that's exactly what you did. So well, and that's perfect. And, yeah. and you know, I mean, you really don't want to up the coffers because then everyone's sick at the con. Yeah, no, no, that, not this year. Not this, oh, no, especially not this <laughs> no, year. No, yeah, let's not, not year up the coffers. Especially not this year. This yeah. year. <laughs> no. Good, nice, nice. How long have you been the chair of this con? Uh, this year, I think, will be my fifth year. Oh, wow. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. So you're um, old hat, as it were. It sure doesn't feel like For it. It feels like I'm learning every year. <laughs> <laughs> How to do it every year. We, we've talked to yeah, other, yeah. we've had a few other con chair, 
con chairs on, on the show before, you know, Uncle Kage and Gabriel from A&W and stuff. And they're saying, yeah, we're, we're still learning all the time. So, mm. so what other cons would you typically go before, you know, things now, but what other cons would you typically like to go to? I, I, I always go to AC. I, I actually really appreciate AC at Pittsburgh. I, I appreciate Pittsburgh for how it treats AC and treats us in general. Like it, it, Pittsburgh loves us. And we like to believe that it's partly due to the community here that really has fostered that as well as AC. So I go to AC every year. Uh, I do generally go to MFF most years, almost every year. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I will go to, I, I try to go to TFF most every year. I'm technically oh. on staff there, but some years just doesn't work out. Have I hugged you there yet? Possibly. But I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might have been frazzled. That, I, I might have been frazzled. I might have been frazzled because I was I was maybe working. So forgive me. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. No, I. Yeah, I, I mean, Tabin hugs everyone, so you know you could have been hugged and never known. So. Yeah, I, I I love TFF. Um, I mean, I've only been to three or four. I forget how many, but I love TFF. It's a great con. Maybe it that's really where well I've run. seen Kitty. Anyway, so that that's great. So you've been going to cons for a while now. Mm -hmm. What do you like to do at cons? You do you do panels? I know some for like I'm a dancey pup, so I like to do dances. Do you do that? Do you ever do any performances at the cons? I, I have. Um, so different cons, I have done different performances there. I have done different um, showcases with um, friends like Naboa and BC Breakaway and and, uh, and their friend and every other friend within there. We've done sort of like masquerade performances, oh, dance, yeah, okay. small, small things. Nothing too crazy. Just we've done it a couple times, partly because they, they put together songs that are like parodies of, of regular songs. And I have performed, uh, I, I've done, of all things, I've done two weird dance competitions. One was at Furpocalypse just as a, as a stupid, wasn't a uh, I wasn't competing. I was I was just a intermission act basically. Oh, okay. I I came in as a I came in in a balloon and I threw bananas at people. And I'm, nice. It, that's that's basically nice. that yeah. that was. I, I it was a stupid thing, but it worked and people laughed and it was fun. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I competed in one. I think I competed at IFC just for the heck of it one day. Nice. But I, I go to different cons depending on the year. But I, I oh I go to BLFC fairly often too because I really do like BLFC. So um, oh, well, I must have hugged you at B BLFC too then because BLFC is yes. yeah one of my favorites. So <laughs> anyway, it's great. It's a great con. It really is. Do you have now? This is a very unfair question, but I, I ask lots of furs this. Do you have a favorite con memory? I have, I think, a couple that stick out in my mind. One is very weird in that it was me. It was the first time I ever volunteered for a con. And that was TFF. Nice, nice. And I volunteered to help with parking of all things because they had a weird parking issue that year it okay. was at the old intercontinental and they had a they had a backup parking lot on the other side of like a street and they had to have people guide and i was running around like a fool and i for some reason really enjoyed doing it at the time i was just energetic towards it because it's and, fun to be a fool i guess <laughs> yeah i think it's what it was and i met actually i met who became one of my closest friends at the time he drove right by me and i was like waving at him to go to a certain place and he remembered me distinctly because i was being I was being me <laughs> and um, and I met him later and and, and then uh, we became good friends and it was like the first con he ever went to cool. and now he's actually a remarkable uh, one of the most impressive artists I've I've known oh, in wow. fact and he became that only in a couple years that's pretty good Swish Cheetah actually Swish is, Cheetah. is a remarkable artist and he only learned it man I think he's been doing it maybe for five six years and not really that long Hmm. And he learned so fast and has become so good and so quickly. It's it it hurts me. Wow. It hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that talent clearly was underlying in his possession. Definitely. He just never really tapped it. Definitely. So once he started tapping it, it just blossomed. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice, mm -hmm. nice. I'll have to check him out then. So shout out to him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I think all the Spurs can say at, at cons, we we meet a lot of well, we meet a lot of furs, but we also meet a lot of furs that become our really good friends. And those end up becoming uh, some of our best con memories, mm -hmm. of course, for obvious, obvious reasons. So is there anything else about yourself that you would like to share with our listeners? Other than the fact that I'm a big car nerd and that you <laughs> might see, like, I, I love cars. I, and I, it's a huge, that's a huge hobby of mine. I, I work on a number of different things. I own a Yugo and a Model T. People, <laughs> people have seen me in the Model T. So, well, you know, when weird. you're in that car, you go. Yes, exactly. Or you don't go. Or you don't, as the case may be. Yeah. And that, the funny thing about that that one is that I, I was very proud of that one because I bought it from Oklahoma and we drove it back on a trailer that should never have hauled a car oh. to Pittsburgh. <laughs> 
Uh, and and it, you made it, yeah, apparently. We made it just fine. And then I, you know, I started it up a couple of times and then suddenly the timing belt blew and the engine died. And that took I until I, I worked on it and I brought it back to life. And the first trip it took, other than a five minute jaunt around town, was a 2,300 mile trip during the Lemons Rally. Wow. You and it was picked the first it up thing. Wow. pretty well, apparently. <laughs> it was more reliable than a lot of the cars that were on it. So I'd say so. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm reminded of the, there's a line in a movie, I think it was, was it the Blues Brothers? They were driving a Yugo and they said something about the, the finest of Yugoslavian automotive technology. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, was that was that Blues Brothers or was that uh, Die Hard? I know they had a Yugo uh, and Die Hard. Yeah. I'll have to look yeah, it up. Remember. But yeah, I remember that. There's not too many of those around. No, they they ate themselves basically and people didn't care yeah, yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> right yeah so, wow yeah. so yeah. so any of you furs out there that are car nerds and stuff find manic at a con and uh you'll be apparently you will all be together for like the just the entire con just geeking out on the cars yep yeah nice nice very nice yep. so barely so manic so one of the things we do with all our guests we wind up uh, with our interview for you to give a parting shot to the fandom your your words of wisdom what might you tell the fandom to make it better be honest with your intentions okay good i like that and i say that because we all want different things and mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes we we try to sort of mask them and try to get them in different ways and i know i've done this like i've done this in ways like i've i've hidden behind a mask in a certain way that it, I didn't represent who I was. Mm -hmm. So I, when I learned to actually just embrace that I wanted something or I was a certain way or I, who, who I was, I was far more happy about it. Even though I was an, a, an animal character, I was still me. Mm -hmm. So and I think I should mm -hmm. be honest with your intentions and your desires. And uh, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Cool. And that Great. will help us be honest with other first too. And we'll all be a happier family. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Manic, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, thank you for spending some time with us. I know that it's late where you are, so we're going to let you oh, go. I always like to make sure that uh, everybody gets what they need from the, our podcast. And hopefully we will see you at BLFC or a, or a con somewhere. I'm kind of wanting to come out to the uh, Wapafa now to do the whole whiskey thing because I'm like a whiskey guy. Well, so, uh, you know, it's like. <laughs> I'm not sure what we're doing this year, so I don't think it'll be whiskey this year, unfortunately. Eh, but well, it might not be. Eh, what, I might bring my own whiskey. I could have my own panel there you go. on whiskey. No, we, you know, we, we would there. love so that. Whiskey Honestly, panel. we would adore that. Yeah, we would so, totally have that. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, my parents live in Tennessee. I have to go out there mm. quite regularly, which is not too far from Pittsburgh. It's a day's not drive, so if that, maybe. Yeah. You know, so it's not bad. So I could do that. But uh, thanks again for coming on the Thank show. At, oh, Tabin. Oh, well, what, I what just said, because you said... Fairly said, I did hope that all our guests get from the show what they want. And so I just feel that, I mean, what is that? <laughs> well, you should always get what you want. Uh, sometimes you get what you want, but if you try some hard, sometimes you get what you need. Yeah. That is a there phrase that so. I have heard. That's a thing. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, no. That's, that's a thing. It's it a line from some, a song, actually. And if you try some hot, yeah. that's uh, Rolling Stones. Is that right or wrong? Is you it? can't always get what you want. You can't always get what know. you want. But if you try some time, you might find you do what you need. The only reason I know that line. Yeah, it might be, actually. I am. It, it might be. It's a... <laughs> the only reason. Well, we've gotten off the rails as we normally do in our show. good so <laughs> hi i mean i was going to say the only reason i know the line to that song is because it's in a weird al polka and like i know many weird al yeah. songs so, but oh <laughs> yes he does yes he does all right manic thanks for coming on the show it's been a pleasure to have you uh we'll let you go tabin say bark 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 thanks so much i'll say a little bit more and i'll say thank you so much manic for being on the on the show and gracing us with your beautiful voice all you first go out there take a listen to this talented kitty and until we talk to you next time bark bark and moo, moo bark, bark fluff. fluff and meow thank you thank you so much for having meow. me i mean that sincerely <laughs> what an awesome awesome fur i have to say i mean i know i say that a lot about our guests but it's just wow i mean and his voice i could listen to his voice all night long yeah i i meant to say um like he's got this awesome singing voice but just like for podcasts he's got this nice mellow calm just soothing voice <laughs> he's got a golden dulcet tone that he, he really uh, he definitely really fits does. into that yes definitely he definitely does definitely does i am going to be checking out all of his 
all of his social media and all of his media to listen to some of those things that he's got going on because, wow, I would love to hear him sing Michael Buble oh. or some Frank Sinatra. I should either, totally either. ask him to do that uh, and send us a recording of him singing, like, uh, I don't know, some Frank Sinatra song. Some Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Yeah, and so. he's got. I've heard. I heard of some few other really great things he does on there. Um, I mean, I mentioned Silverchair and kept mentioning Silverchair because I love Silverchair. But yeah, he's got some other really great known covers that you know they're not all just like uh, some of those. This is an artist that sang a song one time, and I'm gonna sing it again too. I mean, they're, they're actually songs that you right. would actually yeah. recognize. So um, he does a really great job. I had never heard of Silverchair until you mentioned that. I was wondering, when oh. you mentioned that, I was like, the heck is Silverchair? Silverchair. So now I'm why, gonna have to why look not that the up gold? too. So. Right. And then you said they were the high chairs. I'm like, were they baby singers? Because <laughs> I saw your face when I first said that. You didn't know, but the, the... <laughs> yeah. 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 I was like, so I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, so now I got a lot of work to do. Not only do I have my employment to do, but now I have a lot of work to do just to just to learn up. about uh, all these things. Keep these up, things. Keep up no. the pup. But keep, keep up, up the, the pup. pup. But right. you will be better for it. I will be better for it. Indeed. Yeah. That's another word. Better for it. And, well, actually, you won't be a better for it because you're a bear, not a for it. <laughs> you know, coming back from the guest, we always go to a certain section. Yes. And, and before we go to that section, I want yes. to sh- say a few, two quick, quick, quick facts about me. Facts about, about you. About me. About What, so what are facts the facts about, about Taven? Really quick facts about Taven. This happens often that I, I, I sometimes wonder why the ball gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it hit me. And then another fact about me that most furs don't know is that I used to be a crastinator, and then I decided to go pro. So now you're a pro crastinator. <laughs> That's all I got about that. And now it's time for Furries in the News. Cue music, please. Let me pause for just a second to say, do you remember barely (laughs) where this came from, this thing that I do? There was an origin to it. I don't remember the origin. Do you remember the origin? I do. Way oh. back when. Okay. When you started, you know, we started the furries and the news thing, and it made me think of pigs in space, the thing right. on the Muppets. And so uh. that first episode, I said, pigs in space. And so that's where this whole thing came uh, from. Oh, okay. All right. So I continue. <laughs> Pigs in space, shout out. This is a tribute to all you piggies out there in the, in the house. Oh, and I love the little bark at the end. That's always, I look forward to that bark. That, that means it's done. Because that means it's the done, bark. exactly. It's done. Once I get the bark, it's done. All right. So, furries in the news. So, there is a new PC game out. Nice. I guess it's new. It's called Fuga, Melodies Fuga. of Steel. Hmm. And it was released last month for consoles and PC. It's the latest game in the Japanese developer CyberConnect 2's Little Tail Bronx series. I'm cute. Now, CyberConnect is mainly known for anime fighting games like Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm. But every now and then, it releases a game set in its own steampunk fantasy. And again, I'm using air quotes. Steampunk punk fantasy. A world made up of floating islands populated by anthrop- anthropomorphic... That's a hard word to say. Anthropomorphic dogs and cats. Nice. Ooh, or nice. doggies I'll and kitties. have to check this out already. Their very first foray was in 1998, so many years ago. 1998. That was a long time ago. You know, it doesn't seem like 1998 was that long ago, but when you think about it, that was 24 years like ago. When you do the math, yeah. It's, it's like, ah, oh, wow. I have shirts older than that. But anyway, their first foray was a 1998 action platformer called Tail Concerto or Concerto or Concerto. I don't know how you say that word. Should be an H if it's Concerto. Yeah. Concerto. Uh, it was a followed, and it was followed. In 2010, so many years later, by the role-playing game 
Zolotarobo, the Red Hunter for Nintendo DS. And then in 2014, it was brought to the Japanese-only mobile social RPG Little Tail Story. It's called the part of the Trilogy of Vengeance. In this particular case, the vengeance is that of a group of children. Yay, children! Taking on a furry fantasy analog of World War II's German army to try and save their kidnapped parents and or grandparents. So this sounds very interesting. I think um, I'm glad you pointed this out because I had not heard of it. I think I'm going to try it out. It's on Steam, at least for PC. You can get it on Steam for $39.99. So we'll see if I do that. But That's, it looks actually very interesting. Yeah, $39.99. It's, I mean, you know, in, in days gone by, $40 for a game would be like, it's only $40. And now you look at a game, it's like, it's $40? Really? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Why is it so expensive? But I mean, but 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 it does look pretty interesting for this. You know, I've talked about before how this pup likes RPGs and everything, and this is kind of all furry and stuff. So this actually mm-hmm. sounds very interesting. I might end up doing if I do it. I'll uh, I'll play it a little bit and review it on yes. a, a pup episode. Yeah, no, we should have game good. reviews as a regular. We really should. So I've yes. been getting a lot more games and trying out a lot more games recently, so we should do yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, I play games too on my phone and on my yeah. little console, so we should have a game. Okay, we starting should. next week. Well, maybe not next week, but soon we will have soon. game reviews as part of our regular, our regular broadcast network. Anyway, bark bark. Uh, do you have anything in the news before we get to upcoming events? I do not. Nothing. <coughs> wow. Oh, wow. Oh, excuse me. Did That's you choke exciting. on your? Wow, you choked on your. I puppy choked bone on there. some fluff. Yeah, there was a lot of fluff. Yeah. I mean, the only news item I had was the one I said before about Mario, and I didn't put it in the furry in the news because it's not really a furry. It's in the not news, furries, so, not. Yeah, but, yeah. So anyway, I mean, it's even though exactly. Cooper Tom did do a thing, but it wasn't. Yeah. That anyway, yeah. No, I don't have news any, adjacent. Okay. It's news adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't have any actual freeze in the news. All right, so we have our on the road reporter, Lux Operon, is going to tell us a little bit about Frolic. So, what is Frolic before we get going on there, Lux? Hey there, Barely. Uh, so, yeah, so Frolic is a fairly well known monthly dance party that happens in San Francisco that is hosted by ne- uh, DJ Neon Bunny. It's been happening for 10 years. And it takes place at the Eagle in San Francisco. Oh, nice. Well, tell us all about it. To, to, to put it plainly, Frolic is the heart of the furry scene in the Bay Area. Pretty much anybody who's anybody goes there. You have convention runners, fursuit makers, uh, fursuiters. It is a wonderful way to guarantee seeing fursuits outside of a convention space. And what's wonderful about the Frolic party is it's not so common that it gets old and boring, but it's not so rare that you don't see regulars at it. So in in the heart of San Francisco, it used to take place at a bar called The Stud. And originally, even before that, Neon Bunny back in, gosh, the 90s, ran these raves called Silly Bunny Parties, even before like furry was a thing. And Neon Bunny would like throw them in warehouses around the Bay Area. And that that stopped for a while and Neon Bunny was doing his own thing. And a friend came to him and said, hey, you know, furry's becoming a thing now. Why don't you start throwing your silly bunny parties again? And he's like, oh, okay. (laughs) And and Frolic was born and it was born at the stud. Um, I made it to the stud once before it shut down. And it was was this kind of interesting indoctrination into the furry scene in uh, in the Bay. And it's funny, it, it draws people from all, all over. I came down from Santa Rosa, which was a full hour and 20 minutes away. But oh, wow. it's, yeah, it's it's that, it's that big and there's no parking. And it's it's a little, I mean, if, if you park your car in San Francisco, it's a little spooky, but it is absolutely worth the trip. The Eagle, uh, the stud and, the, and now the Eagle, both leather bars and the Eagle is this establishment in San Francisco, if you will, a, a place a place where you can come and you can, and it's, it's a play, it's a gay bar. So it's kind of always there. And it's a wonderful fit for furry because everyone can just kind of come in and you're honestly not the freakiest people in there. Right. It's, it's <laughs> so, always there. I love that term. It's a gay bar. It's always there. Right. right. Well, it, it's <laughs> funny. Cause I, I think about this and the stud was always there until it wasn't the stud uh, ended up changing ownership and then eventually closing down. And the, 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 pr- the price of real estate is so expensive in, in San Francisco that it's really hard to operate businesses. And what's, what's interesting is that when the stud finally, you know, uh, went on its way, the city actually celebrates the Eagle. There's actually a little park plaza in front of it now. And there's a giant leather pride flag that flies in the sky. So as you're approaching the bar, if you look up rather than the American flag, you see the leather pride flag. So, you know, you're on your way home. And uh, Frolic, I've been there many, many times now at uh, at the Eagle. And it's wonderful. It's basically 
a furry convention without any convention, but it's it's great. You're always guaranteed to see uh, 20, if not 50 fursuits at this wow. thing. And nice. yeah, and, and the bar staff is incredibly friendly. There's a well-monitored changing tent. The dance stage is a little small because of the setup. But what's funny is when you go there, you also still have your regulars at the bar who, who welcome us in. It's kind of, it's almost like, it, it does really feel like coming home. The old leather daddies love the furries and everyone kind of comes in. It's a wonderful place to meet people. The last time I went was this last weekend. And it's funny because frolic has always been something very special to me. And I have been, there's been some family stuff going on in my life. Uh, my grandfather passed last year and because of COVID, as well as other things, um, he's not really getting a memorial service. And my grandfather is someone who loved fireworks and loved parties and loved celebrating. And I thought, you know what? I want to give my grandfather fireworks. And I can't think of a better way of doing that than going to a gay bar with a bunch of people <laughs> dressed like animals. So I went down there with some glowing balloons. I went down there with um, with some leftover stock that I had gotten either returned or, or whatever from, from my art business. And I gave pretty much every single thing away. It was like I was giving my troubles away, you know. There were glowing balloons floating around and glow sticks and warmth and happiness and it was a healing thing for me and something I desperately needed last weekend. And I love going to this event. And uh, Neon Bunny, who runs it, is a good person and a well-organized person because you wouldn't have something furry last 10 years without good people behind it. And you will, the cast of characters that rotates in and out, pe people are known in, in this bar. And when I wasn't known to any other furries, I was known um, at Frolic, when I still couldn't hmm. afford to go to conventions or still like it was tough to travel, I could still somehow make it down to San Francisco because there would always be a furry in the bay going. And mm -hmm. if you tapped into that grapevine, they'd take you there and you could have your little convention. Now, th th there is a point of the night where things get <clears throat> a bit intimate. And that is a time for, <laughs> seriously, that, that, that is a time for those yes. not interested in the extracurriculars to go home. And that's normally when I go. I, I have a few friends who we just go there to party. And then when it becomes a little more, you know, couply, then mm -hmm. we decide to leave and, and, and go back. And it's wonderful. You're, you're never, you can go to a bar and not drink a drop of alcohol and have a wonderful time. It's a great place if you're sober because no one will pressure you to drink. It's a wonderful place if you like to drink in moderation because there's plenty of great drinks mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. bar. And the atmosphere there feels it, – it, it, is, it is a convention is what it is. It is the, mm -hmm. the wonderful, glowing, beautiful, sparkling love that you feel at a furry con. And it happens the second Saturday of every month. So I, I would ask people, if you are in the Bay Area or if you are visiting the Bay Area and it's around the second Saturday of the month and – Things are either back to normal or kind of how they are, because right now you do need your vax card and you need your mask. Mm -hmm. But if you if you ever want to wonder what the heart of the Furry Bay Area community is, I do mean that, the heart and soul, I would love to invite you to come down to Frolic. And if you're ever there, just ask for Lux Operon. They will find me and I will find you and I will introduce you to everyone because I am nice. known there. So, yes. Nice. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So this is something that uh, you said. Bunny, what was his bunny? Neon, neon bunny. Yeah, neon, neon bunny. There's, there's, there's a website actually. A uh, frolic, mm. shoot, a uh, frolic party. Or if you, if you type frolic furry into Google, it'll pop right up. You can see okay. photos of the past events. You can hear set lists. And yes, it's run by Neon Bunny. The, the uh, Telegram chat uh, splice um, uh, moderates it. There's a Telegram chat. You're welcome to join it, whether you're coming to frolic or not. It's a wonderful way to find photos after the event is over. And I'm telling you, like, this is a destination event. You know, when when Frolic came back, well, first of all, when Frolic went away, we were all losing our minds, but uh, Neon Bunny hopped on and they did streams, like DJ streams every weekend. And we all sat around our cameras nice. and we danced. That was actually when I made my first glowing pup hood was during those streams. I was actually oh, selling nice. it while I was watching him do awesome. the party. And now, you know, pup hoods are a tent pole of my business. So mm -hmm. I like to think that Frolic birthed that in, in a small, distant way. Now, the, the, the frolic that happened before this one was incredible. There was everybody there. There were people flying in from Alaska and wow. uh, Sweden. Yes, this is this is a well-loved event. And if if you ever need a little bit of furry love, you're ever feeling it and you have the chance to get to San Francisco second Saturday, it, 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 is, it is $12 at the door and $8 if you have a fursuit. It is well worth the price of admission. Wow. Awesome. Um, and it is something that I hope will continue far beyond 
anyone's ability to manage it. It's, Neon, the Neon Bunny has done something very, very special. And I can only hope that more people find Frolic when they need it, because I certainly needed it uh, last weekend. And I'm so glad that I was able to be there. Well, thank you very much for that report. I'm going to have to try and get down to San Francisco at some point now and Absolutely. go to this because, well, I'm just going to have to retire from my job and just travel around and go to all the cons and the meets and things like that. It's just, so, I mean, oh my how, goodness. How, what a better way to retire. There is right. no better way to retire. Just go around to all the furry things <laughs> and just have a great old time. There is a sister event down in L.A. called Tail, but Frolic is the gr- is the great granddaddy of furry. Okay. So, awesome. yeah, if you, have, if you ever come down, we'll record a podcast from inside the bar. It'll be fun. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be fun. That'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, Luck, for that report. And uh, we will uh, we will talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Well, upcoming events, uh, September 3rd through the 5th is uh, Mephit Fur Meat in the Whispering Woods Hotel and Conference Center in Olive Branch, Missouri. Now, I have no idea where that is or whether that's a nice hotel and conference center. but Maybe it's I... in Jerusalem because that's where they have all the olive branches. But, I mean, if I'm in the woods and they're whispering to me, I'm going to see what Run I've away. been taking. <laughs> yes. It's like the woods, are, the woods are whispering. Did you ever see that movie Signs? Uh, signs. Swing Away. No, Swing no, away. SIG. It's oh. it's a. I was so scared, pup. Anyway, there's this scene in Signs and the whole thing about whispering in the woods. If you, any of you first saw the movie Signs, you'll know what I'm talking about. Anyway, was that an alien scary. movie? It was, and it was scary, pup. That was the one where the aliens couldn't get wet. Right. Yep. 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 Yeah. 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 That's why the, yeah. the term "swing away" because there was an alien in the house and. They hit it with a baseball oh, bat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, yeah, I know yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. talking about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With uh, yeah. the very end. Joaquin Michael Phoenix. Keaton. Joaquin Phoenix and Joaquin Michael Phoenix. Keaton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joaquin, yeah, yeah. Right. Anyway, well, I, we digressed like Norm, we know what we do. So getting back to the Mephit Fur Meat, uh, 2021 in September 3rd through the 5th. Uh, Mephit Fur Meat, usually called MFM, is an annual furry convention that takes plus, place, plus, place over Labor Day weekend each year. And it started out as a pizza party on a long weekend in 1997. So it's been going on for a while. Wow. And it's yeah, that's a long one of, one of the longest running, continually furry, running furry meetups in the country. So there you go. So if you're in uh, Missouri and you want to go to the Mephit Fur Meet, go. A historical fur meet, apparently. A historical. You could be part yes. of that. And if you're not in America and you happen to be in uh, Glasgow, you can go to the uh, Scotia Con. Uh, the same Scotia weekend, Con? September 3rd to yeah. 5th. Yes, Scotiacon. A furry convention located in the city of Livingston, Scotland, which is funny because it says Glasgow on the website, and then it's and then the, their write-up oh. says hmm. Livingston, Scotland. So I'm not sure hmm. where it's at. So check that out there, before you go, because you don't <laughs> want to you like, go. yay, I'm ready. Wait, where is every, there's yeah. like nothing here. So yeah, you don't want that to happen. <laughs> right, right. It's, so uh, it started at the Inverness. The convention moved to the middle belt of Scotland uh, to be more accessible to attendees. It's the perfect convention, as they say, for those just getting their feet wet. Now, I have not gotten my feet wet at a con ever. I've gotten drunk. I've gotten fun, but I've never gotten wet at a at a fur con. I don't know if you've ever gotten wet, but it's especially not just I on my feet. I, yeah. my, my fluff doesn't like that, no. Right. right. <laughs> well, most dogs like to swim. I'm surprised you don't like to swim. Um, not very often, no. I try yeah. not to. So uh, they say that the convention begins towards the end of the year is a brilliant chance for those wanting a change of scenery, scenery, and a way to wind down for a weekend away. So there you go. That and is apparently, what's it's up um, a steampunk. It's got a steampunk theme or something too. Does it have a steampunk theme too? Wow. Okay. Wow. Well, I, oh, yes. I don't know. The, the notes say that it has steampunk oh, yes. programming. So I guess so. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. know. I, don't listen I to mean, me. Don't listen to this. Pup. It's It probably does have a steampunk programming. I probably just skipped right over that in the script. So I apologize to all our listeners uh, and those of you that are reading <laughs> along <laughs> on the or those of you that are reading along on the closed captioning. Uh, I missed that totally. So um, there we go. Now oh, I'm going to okay, have a fur good, right good. in and say, where's the closed captioning? I've never seen the closed I've captioning. Never, what are you talking about? <laughs> There's no closed captioning, folks, friends, in a bar for you. There are no closed captions. All right. I think, you know, we're pretty far off the rails at this point. So I think we should bring it back around. Around. So that we can get to what everyone's been waiting for. for those of you that tuned in last week know that there was a cliffhanger on last week's episode. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it was Snow White and the Seven Towering Giant. Giants? Giants. <laughs> yeah. Giants. 
It's the giant ants. That's what it is. I tell you what, it's a big one. The giant ants, the giant ants. So it's the giants. So with that, take it away, Tabin, with part two of Snow White and the Seven Towering Giants. Yes, thank you. So for all you furs that might remember from last week, if you heard it, I started this the PC version of Snow White. Again, shout out to Tony Hinshaw on Twitter for requesting that I read this. And uh, so let me just do a quick recap of where we are. So Snow White's mother of step, as it were, because we're all PC, whatever that means. Um, that is the queen. She's mad at, she's mad that she's not the fairest of them all because of the meter and everything. And uh, she set a woods person to kill Snow White. Uh, so that, you know, she's vengeful apparently. The woods person found Snow White, told Snow White of the plan and told her to run off into the forest. Because woods person is a good person. In the forest, she finds the seven towering giants and stays with them. And meanwhile, the mother of Step finds out from the mirror that Snow White is still alive. And so she devises a plan. And that's where we are. Let's find out what this plan is. now, is. the exciting conclusion. Exciting conclusion. Does the mother of Step actually ensure the non-viability of her daughter of Step? So, a few days later, Snow White, to be sure she didn't touch or re rearrange anything, she's staying, if you remember, she's staying at the cottage of the seven towering um, giants. To make sure she doesn't touch or rearrange anything, was meditating on the floor in the middle of the cottage. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Snow White opened the door to find a chronologically gifted woman with a basket in her hand. She's chronologically gifted. Chronologically gifted. All right. By the look of her clothes, she was apparently unfettered by the confines of regular employment. <laughs> oh, okay. Help a woman of unreliable income, dearie, <laughs> she said, and buy one of my apples. Snow White thought for a moment. In protest against Argor business conglomerates, she had a personal rule against buying food from middle persons. <laughs> 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 but, but her heart went out to the economically, the economically marginalized woman. So she said yes. What Snow White didn't know was that this was really the queen in disguise, and that the apple had been chemically and genetically altered so that <gasps> whoever bit into it would sleep forever. Oh no! When Snow White handed over the money for the apple, you would have expected the queen to be gleeful that her plan for revenge was working. Instead, though, she looked at Snow White's fine complexion and slim, taunt body. She felt alternating waves of envy and self-revulsion. Finally, she burst into tears. Uh, why, what's the matter? asked Snow White. You're so young and beautiful, sobbed the disguised queen, and uh, I'm horrible to look at. It's just getting worse. You, you shouldn't say that. After all, beauty comes from inside a person, Snow White said. I've been telling myself that for years, said the queen, and I still don't believe it. How do you stay in such perfect shape? Well, I, I meditate, work out in step aerobics three hours a day, and eat only half portions of anything placed in front of me. Would you like me to show you? Snow well, White of course. says, of course. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, please, said the queen. So they started out with 30 minutes of simple hatha yoga meditation, then worked out on the step for another hour. As they relaxed afterwards, Snow White cut her apple in half and gave a piece to the queen. Without mm. thinking, the queen bit into it. Oh, no. Oh. And both of them fell into a deep, deep sleep. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 indeed. Later that day, the seven towering giants returned from a retreat in the woods, elaborately decked out in animal skins, feathers, and mud. With them was a prince from a nearby kingdom who had come on this male retreat 
to find a cure for his, hmm, where did I go? For his, a word I don't know, impotence. So is that like tense? <laughs> but impotence? Impo- I'm not... I'm not sure what that means, but maybe as the maybe they'll tell us later in the story what that means. They were all laughing and backslapping until they saw the bodies and stopped short. What has happened? asked the prince. Apparently, our house guest and this other woman got into some sort of catfight and killed each other, surmised one giant. If they thought that by doing this, they could make us slaves to our weaker emotions, they are wrong, fumed another one of the giants. Well, Since we've got to dispose of them, let's practice one of those Viking funerals that we've read about. You know, said the prince, this might sound a little sick, but I trust you chaps. I find that younger one attractive, extremely attractive. Would you fellows mind, um, waiting outside while I dot dot dot? They don't finish the sentence here in the book. I'm not sure why. Hmm. Anyway, Hmm. um, so, uh, Stop right there, said the leader of the giants. Those half-eaten apple pieces, that that filthy consume, this has to be earmarks of some sort of magic spell. They're not really dead at all. Hmm. Oof, <laughs> said the prince. That makes me feel a lot better. So could you chaps take a break and let me dot, dot, dot. I don't know why they don't keep finishing the sentence. I'm not really sure if I can understand the story, but okay. Hold it, prince, said the leader. Does Snow White make you feel like a man again? I'm not sure why he asked that, but okay. Well, well, she he's... certainly does. Now, could you chaps... Dot, dot, dot. Again, why aren't they finishing off these sentences? I don't understand. Don't touch her. You'll break the spell. The leader thought for a minute and said, My brothers, I see certain economic possibilities arising from this. If we kept Snow White around here in this state, we could advertise our retreat as impotency theory, therapy. <laughs> so there's that word, Tansim. I don't really understand what that is, but I'm glad they're like figuring out ways to take it to their advantage, I guess. The giants yeah. nodded in agreement with this idea, but the prince interrupted, but what about me? I've already paid for my retreat. Why can't I um, take the cure? And I don't know what this curious are talking about. Maybe it's the apple that he thinks is gonna help them out. No dice, prince, said the leader. You can look, but don't touch. Otherwise, you'll break the spell. Tell you what, though. You can have the other one if you want. (laughs) I don't want to sound classist, said the prince, but she's not high enough caliber for me. Uh. Again, this pup is having trouble processing what's happening in this, but it sounds Mm -hmm. like a good story. That's pretty big talk from a mound shooting blanks. So now they're in a Western. Is that what that means? I don't understand what's going yes, on. Yes, that's what that so, means, Tabin. Okay, yes. so now they're in yes. a Western. And so uh, everybody but the prince laughed at that for whatever reason. I guess I'm going to mm-hmm. have to go back and read this later to figure out all these jokes. Mm-hmm. The leader said, come on, brothers. Let's lift these two off the floor and decide how we can best display them. It took three giants for each female, but they managed to get both bodies aloft. As soon as they did, however, the pieces of poisoned apple fell from the mouths of Snow White and the Queen, and they awoke from the spell. Oh no. Oof. <laughs> Oof. That's what I think about that. Oof. What do you think you're doing? Put us down, they shouted. The giants were so startled they almost dropped the women to the floor. That was the most sickening thing I have ever heard, shouted the Queen, offering us around like pieces of property. And you, said Snow White to the prince, trying to make it with a girl in a coma. Yuck. I don't know what they're trying to make. I mean, like bad weaving baskets or something. I'm going to have to go back and figure out these. Hey, don't blame me, said the prince. It's a medical condition. Oh, poor prince. He's got a medical condition now. The leader of the giant said, don't start tossing blame around. You both broke into our property in the first place. I can call the police. Don't try it, Napoleon, said the queen. This forest is property of the crown. You are the ones who are trespassing. This rejoinder caused quite a stir, but not as big a commotion as when the queen warned. And another thing, when we were immobile, and you all blathered on in your sexist ways, 
I had a personal awakening. From now on, I am going to dedicate my life to healing the rift between young women's souls and their bodies. Not just young, but old, but all women's souls and their bodies. I am going to teach women to accept their natural body images and become whole again. Snow White and I are going to build a women's spa and conference center on this very spot where we can hold retreats, caucus, and ovariums for the sisters of the world. There was much hmm. shouting and name calling, but the queen eventually got her way. Before the seven towering giants could be ev evicted from their home, though, they packed up their sweat lodge. If you remember from last week, they had a sweat lodge. Yes, they sweat packed lodges. it up and moved deeper into the woods. The prince stayed on at the spa as a cute but harmless tennis pro. So that's very useful very of him. Good, good, yes. And Snow White and the Queen became good friends and earned worldwide fame for their contributions to sisterhood. The giants were never heard from again, save for little muddy footprints that were sometimes found in the morning outside the windows of the spa's locker room. The <laughs> end. <laughs> And there, my furs, is the story, the undisputed story of Snow White and the Seven Towering the Giants. Towering Giants. Absolutely wonderful. Where could we have ever heard anything like that ever again or in the past? Nowhere. Nowhere uh, but here. You, you, you heard it here, you furs. <laughs> and possibly in the future at a story time with Tabin. Very possibly, actually. Yes. <laughs> All right. So you know what that brings us up to? It's time for some jokes. <laughs> jokes? Because there's been none. There's been none. There's been no jokes at all. No, that's what the priest said. There's been none. There's been like, none. We're at, I was just going to say, we're at a monastery. That's been why there's been none. <laughs> there's been none. <laughs> and what's your joke book? Again, please remind all the furs out all there the about furs. your joke book. My quote unquote joke book is Funny Jokes and Foxy Riddles a book from 1968 with a title that has no words in the title that I agree with except the word and. And uh, these are jokes and puns that I have not previously read. I just go mm -hmm. to the next page and and read. And sometimes we don't even know what the jokes even mean. We need for us to, come, to write in and tell us what they even mean. Mm -hmm. And barely, mm -hmm. barely stokes on the other paw. He's actually sorted these out. Yes. So... I don't know. There, there's pros and cons about all this. <laughs> and they're barely jokes or barely jokes. Exactly. But exactly. It's like, there, you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. So I'm going to start off by telling you, do you know what a three-season bed is? Fall, winter, and spring? Well, no. A, a three-season bed would not have a spring. Oh, that's a very good point. Yes, it can't be no fall, spring. winter, spring. That's right. <laughs> yeah, no, this is very educational. I like mm -hmm. that. So there's this little girl. She, her name is Siri. Siri. It's not Siri. It's it's not no. <laughs> hey Siri. Hey, hey Siri. Oh, my phone just lit up. <laughs> <laughs> Susie is her name. Ah. Susie says to Margie, "Is that a real diamond ring?" Margie says. If it isn't, I've been cheated out of 29 cents. <laughs> okay. I, that's it. That's the joke. <laughs> you know, I used to get small shocks every time I touched something metal. But oh, recently really? Did you, was it a uh, special condition you have? Well, I, I don't know, but uh, it's recently stopped. And needless to stay, say, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> needless to say, indeed. Mm -hmm. The neurons are ecstatic. Yes. They're firing. I can hear them, yes. Actually, I just caught it. Like, I thought it meant something else, but it's so much better the actual way it is than what I thought it meant. <laughs> ecstatic. Yes. That's so much better than what I thought. Okay. So much better. <laughs> I'm glad I took that second to, to realize. Good. Awesome. Good for you. Awesome. I, I actually a, like it now. Before, a, I didn't like it as much. You're such a pup. I am <laughs> such a pup. Before, I actually didn't like it as much because by what I thought, but now that I know what it really is, like now I like it. It's great. So Wit says, there's a guy named Wit, apparently. His name is Wit. Okay. His name is Wit. And he says to Knit. We have Wit Knit. Okay. Knit, Wit Knit, Knit Wit. If you remember, Manuel says, what is Wit Knit? Yes. <laughs> if you, 
So, Annie, for go back to the uh, pup episode where we reacted that uh, Foxy Towers episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sketch where he says, what, what is Whitnit? Anyway. What is this Whitnit? Uh, yes. What is uh, Whitnit? So, let me start over. Which says, Please. with which hand do you stir your coffee? And Nit says, my right, of course. And Witt says, I use a spoon. <laughs> I don't. Uh, oh, my cow. Oh, <laughs> my cow, indeed. So speaking of cows. Yes. When is a cow hairy on the inside and the outside at the same time? When it's a coconut? No, when it's in the standing in the doorway of the barn. <laughs> So say all this again. I'm having trouble. So, when is a cow hairy on the inside and the outside at the same time? When she is standing in the doorway of the barn. Because she's hairy on the inside of the inside barn and hairy and on the, the outside, outside of the barn. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so you furs, write us in and tell us. Is it better to have <laughs> not known what we're reading like I'm doing? Or to have actually... Purposely Research sought this out, out yes. these jokes. <laughs> these really bad, bad jokes. I, I purposely seek out bad jokes, yes. Good. Well, there was this man. Speaking mm-hmm. of bad jokes, there was a man. A man. Just one. And he said to the lady, did you hear who's in the hospital? So he's a gay man, apparently. apparently. Did you hear who's in the hospital? The lady says, no, who? Very masculine lady. The man says, Mr. Ajax with ammonia. Uh Oh, I just got it. I just got it. You just got it. Okay. (laughs) I was like, okay, so barely got it. Let me think about this. It it apparently Mm -hmm. makes sense. And then then I got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. I totally got it. It's like little birds flying around your head. So, yes. Yeah. That, that That was a journey right there. Right. So, you know, after dinner last night, my hubby asked me if I could clear the table. I had to get a run up at it, but I made it. I saw that coming. I'm really I'm proud of myself, actually, for like catching on to that before you catching up before I even said the punchline. Good for you. Good for you. It's it's wonderful. I I like it, though. So there's this guy. His name is Jim. If you can believe that. Hello, Jim. Hello, Jim. And apparently you're Leon. So let me tell you your one line, actually. So I'm Jim okay. and you're Leon. Your one okay. line is how. Okay. <laughs> so, which is actually obvious, which is what you have said. But anyway, but so I say to you, I can prove that you are not here. How? Well, you aren't in New York, right? And you aren't in Chicago, right? You aren't in Florida, right? If you aren't in those three places, you must be someplace else, right? If you're someplace else then it's impossible to be here. That's very true. That's, that's very, the joke, though. That's, that's very, so dumb. That's, it's so dumb. It's so dumb. It's, you know, all these jokes, all these jokes make me feel like I'm pretending to be butter. I oh, could yeah? stop. I could stop, but I'm on a roll now. Yeah, no, you can't stop right now. That'd be uh, my jam. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's my last joke. Do you have any last joke for me? Well, that last one was my last joke, but it was so okay. bad. I'm just going to see what the next one is. Okay, please. Please see what the next one is. A teenage boy who was falling in love, he went to the library and took out a book that was entitled How to Hug. Isn't that cute and sweet? Aww. How to Hug. Yes. It's How to Hug. When he got home, he found that he had volume 10 of the encyclopedia. <laughs> we'll just stop right there. Okay, I'm not exactly sure how that's funny. Uh, volume ten of the exactly either, how to but hug. there it is. How to hug? S A B C D E F G H I. No, H is like the eighth letter. Oh, okay, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Very strange. I All don't right. know if it made sense to stop there, or if I should just stop at the previous one. There, Probably should just stop the other one. But it's, you know, we, but we'll the... just say that we're done. <laughs> But the music is playing, which means uh, we've had an amazing show this week, Tabin. We had a great time turning into a VHS tape, which was kind of fun. I know, wasn't that great? That was interesting. It tickled. You know, uh, Hollywood video is still on your nose there. And, of course, we held those rapscallions accountable for their crime, quote-unquote. But seriously, we love them both. It was great uh, to hear 
the exciting conclusion to the Snow White short story. I was Wasn't so excited exciting? to hear that story. It was very exciting. It's to know that they have now made a a place and for contribution women. to and the contrib- nice yes. women to help empower themselves right. with the prince and his tense and people, which I, I'm going to have to go back and figure tense out what that and is. Yes, it's just I said. And of course, all the normal foolishness that goes along with our pod because we're so serious all the time, all the oh, time. Oh my cow, so much, yeah. so much. Yep. Yeah. And remember, folks and furs and friends, if you want to share a really bad joke with us, send us one in the chat and we'll read it on the pod. Yes, we will. We promise you we will. And in fact, we'll join the PFFT shout- chat. We'll give a shout out to you too. We will. We'll give a shout out or, or whatever. Yeah, whatever. We'll say hi. Join our chat on Telegram. <laughs> hi. We'll say hi. Hi. Hi, Fur, that gave us a joke. Okay. You know, please join the BFFT chat on Telegram. We love interacting with our fans. If anybody that's on the chat knows, uh, Tabin and I are on there all the time. We make comments. We chat with them all the time. It's very, very fun. And don't forget our merch. Lots oh, of furs right. asked for merch. And now we got I it. I started merch, and nobody's buying the merch. So go to the sh- Go to the store, bonfire.com, store, barely forecasting, and uh, buy some merch and look at the merch. And thanks to Manic for being our guest today. Thanks to Lux and Rain for being good sports and for Lux for giving us her report on the frolic mm-hmm. and uh, and for playing along with the tribunal. It was all in good fun. We now have a motorcycle that we can ride and uh, hopefully we'll be able to ride it to BLFC if it happens. Thanks to our listeners in the Potiverse. If it wasn't for the listeners, well, we would just be doing this for us. We'd just be so, talking to each other. A few right, times right, which, a week. Which, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And remember, get vaccinated, stay safe, stay furry, and moo bark fluff. So, Tabin, give us your final fluffs. Yes, moo bark fluff to all you furs out there in the Potiverse that are listening. We, of course, as I always say, but it's really true, we love and hug you tight with pausies. We hope we entertain you and that you learn a lot and that you enjoy what we do, as, as Barely said. It's uh, we we love doing it, but we also love doing it for you, and we hope you enjoy it. We really do. Yeah. So thanks so much. I mean, that's all I can say. Thanks so much for for all that. And until then, moo bark fluff. Until next week, we bark at you. Next week, and until then, stay furry. Barely Furcasting is an Injured Nerves Studio production and is found on all major podcast platforms, or can be heard directly at barelyfurcasting.com. The opinions expressed here are those of the hosts and their guests, and no commercial compensation was granted. The Furcast is produced, recorded, and directed by me, Barely Normal, a.k.a. Mike Began, and is edited by myself and our associate editors, Rain Raccoon and Bixby Wolf. This week's interview was edited by Rain Raccoon. Opening and closing theme music, as well as some interstitial music, was created for Injured Nerves Productions for the use on the podcast by our music associate, Reg Day, with Damian Tanuki. If you would like to hear more music by Reg Day, you can search for Tweezerbeak on Bandcamp or Hoop Loop Tunes on SoundCloud. Other interstitial and background music by Shane Ivers through SilvermanSound.com, Gator Tots on SoundCloud.com, and the YouTube Free Use Library. You can send us a message via email at barelyfurcasting at gmail.com or on our Telegram chat at BFFT Chat, on Twitter, on our Facebook page, or on the barelyfurcasting.com webpage. The show is supported through donations at ko-fi.com forward slash barelyfurcasting or through Patreon at patreon.com forward slash barelyfurcasting. Thanks for listening. We hope you come back and listen next week. <laughs>